16th, and I'd like to can I start over, Elise? Okay, it's 9 a.m. on Tuesday, January 16th, and I'd like to call to order the regular business meeting of the Klickitat County Commissioners. Uh, let the record show all three commissioners are present, and let's begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. And do we have a motion for the approval of the business agenda? Madam Chair, I would make a motion to approve the business agenda with one add on um, under new business, a letter of support from Joel Matson. Um, I'd also like to pull item number nine from the consent agenda and add it under new business. Thank you. And a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Aye. Sorry. Those opposed? Hearing none, the motion passes. Um, approval of the commissioner's meeting minutes. I would make a motion to approve the minutes from December 27th, 2023. I'll second. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Hearing none, the motion passes. I would make a motion to approve the minutes from January 2nd, 2024. And a second? I will second that motion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion passes. And we're to that portion of our meeting for public comment. Um, anyone on Zoom, you have three minutes for public comment. Uh, if you're on Zoom, please raise your hand to be recognized. And if you're in the room and wish to comment, please come forward to the seat up front. Thank you. Anyone in the room? No, no public comment. Zoom? No, nobody yet. Everybody's busy today with the cold yeah, weather. Here. Great. So, Sherry? Are you on Good mute? Morning. There you, there you um, are. You need, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Good morning, commissioners. It's quite a chilly day. We're having quite the chill. So maybe global warming is not as bad as everybody thinks. <laughs> anyway, um, I just, I, I want to keep the conversation going because I feel like, you know, the people need to be a friend of the government and the government needs to be a friend of the people. I think that's how our nation was founded. And I just heard you say the pledge allegiance to the flag in the, you know, the United States of America for the Republic. And I, I wonder how much of the Republic still stands or is the house empty, you know? And I want to go back to what I've been trying to talk about how it's been discovered that these municipalities and whatever else, their public subdivisions, that your corporations, you have DUNS numbers, your, you got, you know, Sam's unique ID numbers. In fact, it's been discovered that the name was changed to Klickitat County of, instead of County of Klickitat. And that is now registered with its DUNS number with Jake Anderson, Richard Foster, and Rob Van Cleef as the, I guess the corporation owners, um, and, and, you know, I think it's time to be honest with the people with what we're dealing with. And for Mr. Anderson to say, quite blankly, we are not a for-profit business. Well, yes, you are. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. When you take our money and you invest them in the securities and exchange securities, whatever the bonds, whatever, the, whatever you're doing with our money and you're making profit, off that money, that's a for-profit business. And I think by being dishonest with the people, when the people discover that it is, it is a for-profit business corporation, and then we're lied to and said, no, we're not, when the proof is there, you know, I think that could be a breach of your oath of office, Mr. Anderson. You took an oath to uphold the constitution. And in the constitution, we should have full disclosure. So full disclosure is, yes, you are a corporation. You are a for-profit business. You have DUNS numbers. You know, so let's be honest. And I'd like to hear Mr. Anderson, uh, you know, uh, address again, are you a for-profit corporation or are you not? 
Who is Clickatack County of? What business is that, Mr. Anderson? You're on it. I'd appreciate it being addressed truthfully with the people. We are the people. We are supposed to help our government. It is our duty. It is our duty. And you took an oath to keep that your duty as well. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Um, anyone in the room? Not going to comment today. Just came to visit. Uh, back on Zoom. Does anyone else like to comment this morning? Um, you have three minutes if you'd like to speak to the commissioners this morning. More than likely, everybody's busy with taking care of their snow issues and the ice. Thank you. Lisa Evans. Uh, yes, good morning, County Commissioners. I just wanted to uh, give an update on the Republican precinct caucuses. Um, you know, we, we our, our PCOs had planned and done, and done such a great job um, to have our uh, precinct, precinct caucuses this past Saturday. And of course, the weather was just impossible. And uh, so we decided to postpone, our executive board voted to postpone, um, you know, because the, the caucuses need to be about the entire county. And, uh, you know, about 80% of the county was not going to be able to attend. So I just simply wanted to give an update that the uh, the Klickitat County Precinct Caucuses have been rescheduled for February the 3rd at 10 a.m. And, uh, you know, this is an, an invite to all of you and to all elected officials and, and everyone in, in the county. Um, please mark your calendars for February the 3rd. And uh, I just wanted to give that update. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I'll ask one more time in the room if there's anyone to comment and then back to Zoom. And one more call, uh, anybody? So with that, we will close public comment for today uh, and thank you. And if the commissioners so have a response, I'd like to give them time to do that now. Mr. Christopher, nothing? Mr. Anderson? Well, since Sherry wanted to hear from me, I guess I'll give her an answer. Um, I will reiterate one more time that the county is not a for-profit enterprise. The county's uh, job and duty is to provide services to the citizens of Klickitat County. Uh, what Sherry is talking about is money that the county has on hand that is invested in short-term notes, of which I will note we are getting a really great interest rate return right now. And that, of course, is keeping uh, the taxes that we have to collect lower and helping to balance our budget. Um, if you look through our county budget, you could see what the three Board of County Commissioners budgeted for this next year for those uh, uh, receipts in revenues from our short-term interest rates. I would also like to mention that the Board of County Commissioners does not invest that money. The county treasurer does, not the Board of County Commissioners does. Nothing to do with, the, as you say, the county corporation that um, uh, may not have been updated that has my name on it because I am not the chairman. It would be um, Commissioner Zoller this year who has control over that. Um, so again, this is not a breach of oath a breach in the oath of office. This is how government works. Um, thank you very much for your comment, Sherry. I look forward to next week's. So I'd like to take a minute and thank you, Lisa, for checking in and let us know on that date change. That's an important thing to the people of the county to be able to attend the caucuses and probably a good idea to move to the February the way it's looking. Um, so February 3rd at 10 a.m. I'll just repeat that. And Sherry, um, you know, I came into this year uh, looking for good relationships, looking for better working relationships. And I'd like to say that I know you're on a quest about the uh, Clickadat County money management and our corporations. And I think this might be the fifth week that uh, we've provided information and pointed you in some directions. And words matter. And we're a board of three. And I feel like we have to cooperate as a board of three, and that's what I'm working for. 
So I'd like to say today that I stand behind Mr. Anderson and all of the comments that he's made to you and all of the resources that he has given to you over the past weeks to work on the learning curve, but to use misrepresentations and words like lied to um, and accuse Mr. Anderson individually is just something that I hope we can correct in the future because we are a board of three. We have to vote on things as three. Uh, we're incredibly monitored by our other elected officials and work with them, the auditor and the treasurer. And then that floats up to the state. Uh, there's hardly a way you can have an error or a conspiracy theory within the county for our financial systems. It'd be really, really hard to do. And I'm a strong believer in our honesty and the way we run our boards and that we work every week, we work together to try to make this a better place to work and live. And that's what I'm looking for in Quickstack County, but thank you. And and keep, keep learning. It, it's a good thing that you are. Thank you. So moving on, uh, consent agenda. Or did we do consent agenda? No, we have not. Okay. okay. Uh, Madam Chair, I would make a motion to approve the consent agenda with 13 items, noting that item number nine has been pulled for, pulled for further discussion. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Hearing none, motion passes. Um, moving to the payroll warrants and certification. I would move that we pay the payroll benefit warrants in the amount of $173,350.33 and the payroll benefit warrants in the amount of $811,532.00 for the date ending January 17, 2024. I will second the motion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Hearing none, uh, the motion passes. So we're a little bit early, about 15 minutes for our department update from Lori Anderson. Um, would we like to move to commissioner's miscellaneous reports and comments or? Yeah, we can. Mr. Christopher? Her updates. Um, I will mention that I had a meeting with the attorney representing us on the water right for Condon. Um, I was under the impression that it was going to be the board meeting with them, but I was informed that you two did not uh, wish to do that. So it was just me. Um, it was um, educational in that it was what I thought it was. Um, so I, I, look forward to the board having future discussion where um i now have uh, more and better information is that something that has to be shared in an executive session is that you do don't want to expand we have time if you'd like to expand on anything that you've learned i'm good okay i i when we had the discussion with the PA, I didn't wasn't under the impression that all three of us were going to be there because then we would have had to notice it and everything else. I'd talked with the um, uh, the attorney as well multiple times when we were getting it put in trust. Um, but um, if that's something that you want in the future, that all three of us have a conversation, I'm fine with that as well. Um, I was under the impression it was going to be all three of us so that we could all be able to ask questions of the attorney and have discussions um, amongst ourselves on where we want to go next without, uh, because I'm not one to say he said, she said, or the attorney told me this, or the attorney told me that, because that's all hearsay, and I would have rather the board heard it themselves. Um, but... Um, when we get to the point where we're discussing where we're moving next, um, I, I feel that I will be in a better place to um, I word the thing um, how I move forward. So 
is it your suggestion we have a board meeting, full board meeting with? Is that something you're requesting or just moving forward? I, you're happy with your information? I, I, okay. I had questions on whether I understood it correctly or not, and I did understand it correctly. Okay. Um, when we get to where we want to go and have discussions on what we want it to accomplish or achieve, if there is any bad information presented, uh, incorrect information presented like there has been in the past, I will be happy to correct that incorrect information. And then if the board wants to ask the attorney which commissioner is correct, um, they can. Okay. And I'm comfortable where I am with the information from the condo water right. And I know where else to seek information. So I don't see where we need to um, come into your the attorney's time to come visit with us, all of us, all three of us. Not at the rate they pay charge. And uh, I'm comfortable just moving forward. And when that day comes, that that comes before us for a decision that it sounds like we've all searched out what information we need. So I think we can move forward with that on the conduit water right. Um, we still have 16 minutes or 14 minutes. Would you like to continue on with the Dallasport wastewater plant discussion? I did not put that on the agenda. I don't know who put that on the agenda for discussion. Okay. And I'm lost for the day on that one. <laughs> Um, but we can we can hold that, and if it comes to light where we need to do it, we'll just move forward for now. If we need to do that after a while, um, no problem. Um, so planning, are you ready, Lori? I think so. Okay. I need sunglasses, but you know <laughs> that's awesome to say. Exciting to have sunshine. Get it while you can. Yes. Mm -hmm. Most. No problem. Thank you. So 917, and we're going to go ahead with our uh, weekly planning update with interim director, Lori Anderson. Um, you may have saw my email this morning. We're supposed to have a planning commission workshop tonight. And I've already heard from two planning commission members who strongly encourage us to postpone the meeting. Even though we can meet via Zoom and all. Uh, some are wondering if we'll have power tonight if the weather continues as it's predicted to. So with your permission, we would postpone the meeting. I'd work on contacting everyone and rescheduling and obviously put a notice on the website, call the planning commission members, email, text, however I need to get a hold of them, um, get a notice to the radio station, and also communicate with a couple of the members of the or citizens who you regularly regularly attend. Um. Okay, so then moving on, what we'll do is sometime, obviously, I think this week is kind of out due to weather, but we'll have another meeting before our February meeting. Um, let's see, it was a busy long weekend for a lot of citizens, and they must have had a lot of time. We got quite a few emails with various planning questions that we'll work on responding to. Permit tracking due to not being here on Friday and yesterday being a holiday, I had hoped to have an update on how many pre-subs we had in 2023. And uh, we got started on that and did not get that finished. So hopefully next week we'll have not only a list of how many pre-subs and which topics they're on, whether like um, rezones, conditional use, short plats, et cetera, and then how many of them resulted in an actual permit being submitted. Under Canvas, I have no update from last week's update. And um, again, the prosecuting attorneys taking the lead on that. Our request for proposals, um, they're due back on the 26th in the afternoon. Last week, we are highly efficient on Thursday, thankfully. 
We got two short plots with SEPAs routed as well as a rezone with SEPA routed. And we were kind of pushing it Thursday afternoon, predicting bad weather on Friday. So, hey, it unfortunately our prediction was true, but we got everything out. We do still have a lot of pending projects. The Smith RV park that I was hoping to route the end of last week, we're waiting for some revisions on the draft binding site plan. So those are the big, big things in planning this week. And certainly if you have questions, more than willing to answer them. Looks good. Looks like you're plugging along. We are plugging along yeah. and looking forward to the future. It'll be bright. At least a month from now. Let's, yeah. Let's yeah. Hope. yeah. Get out of where we're at. So no, no questions. Question. Right. Okay. Well, certainly we'll be around to answer any questions that may come up. And thank you and have a great day and stay warm and safe. Thank you. No questions, Mr. Christopher. Okay. Thank you, Lori. Okay. The department update is next at 10 o'clock for public works. So we're early for that 10 o'clock. Um, and for the sheriff update at 1015. We could do the pay estimates, I believe. Okay, thank you. Uh, Madam Chair, we have before us the approval of pay estimate number three and final for the Satis Pass Radio Project Tower uh, and the amount of $28,695.75. Day Wireless was the lowest responsive bidder with a total bid amount of $496,275.27. My motion is to approve. I'll second the motion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Hearing none, motion passes. Uh, Madam Chair, we have before us the approval of pay estimate number three and final for the Satis Pass Radio Tower Site equipment installation in the amount of $12,688.88. Day Wireless was the lowest responsive bidder with a total bid amount of $143,216.93. My motion is to approve. Second. All those in favor? Discussion. Can we have a discussion? Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, I would just like to thank uh, both Public Works and Emergency Management as we're paying the final bill here, here um, for a project that's long been needed in our county, and I'm very thankful that it's finally up. Um, thank you. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion passes. Okay. Um, other discussion. Um, I know we don't have a natural resources coordinator, um, but if anybody got the email from our lobbyist, um, the governor is pushing for a change in the rules regarding wolf management. Um, and I sat through the, uh, the WAG Wolf Advisory Committee group um, for years when we'd hired an outside specialist from DC that came in and $500,000 a year and we created all these rules and now it seems like we're going to throw them all out and go back to the drawing board. Um, we need to, I think with wolves showing up in this county, um, with our agricultural industry, um, this is something we probably want to be involved in as we move forward. Um, just wanted to bring that to the attention for any possible discussion on where the board would like to go. Well, I agree. And I know we have applications in that we'll be seeing soon for that position. And sooner than not, with what we have coming this year, I think we need to get somebody in that position or we need to start formulating some sort of partnership like we did with the squirrel. So we have some coverage, but that's a key position for us going forward for all the reasons for natural resources, including water. So I hope to hear soon that we're going to be doing interviews. Mr. Christopher, do you have any comments on changing? Nope. And I haven't looked at that Potts and Associate 
update today yet. Um, are there time frames, any ticking clocks that we're looking at or uh, just this year? Just getting started. Yeah. Um, I think the Fish and Wildlife Commission is going to have discussions at their next meeting, I think, on next week. Okay. Did you guys already pull number nine from the agenda packet? Yes. Okay. Uh, went looking for it to make sure I didn't sign it ahead of time and didn't see it. Uh, the only other update is, um, is there anything that the board um, legislative wise would like me to take up um, if I can get up through the gorge tomorrow? Mm -hmm. I just got the packet yesterday, have not had a chance to unwind it. And uh, same with me, I can email you and see if there's something there. But um, if you could check with uh, Potts and Associated or look into, I don't have the bill in front of me, that the Southwest Washington and Aging Disability Group had brought up at our last meeting, I can I can get that for you today too. I'm very interested that we stay on top of that. Um, it, it's a crucial change that needs to be done for protection of the elderly people. And it addresses their care and their stability for housing. I have a feeling part of the discussion um, the next couple of days is going to be on the governor's um, new idea to limit um, rent increases to 5% per year. Um, if that's something that the, we'd like to have a discussion on um, and how you'd like me to phrase that up there. What are your thoughts? Um, I think this is a, a bill that's being pushed with uh, good intentions, uh, not understanding the unintended consequences that you're seeing in Oregon, where when they put these caps on rent increases, then every year, every person has to do at least that or do that. Otherwise, they could fall behind because what if you have a year where costs go up 20 or 30 percent, but you can only raise costs 5 percent. Now you're behind. Mm -hmm. Uh, I would say, as a landlord, I did not raise my um, rents this year. If I would have raised my rents, I would have raised them 4%, uh, as that is what uh, inflation was this year. But if this bill passes, I can pretty much assure you I will go 5% per year. Um, and um, I am vehemently opposed to any form of rent control. Uh, I don't believe it has anything to do with enriching landlords. It has to do with um, if you provide, if you make rent control, you are going to extremely limit the number of workforce housing available because you're going to cause landlords to sell their properties instead of rent their properties. And you're already getting, you're going to create more of a housing problem or a rental problem than you currently already have. So uh, it would be my hope that this board would be opposed to rent control. Mm -hmm. Yeah, me too. And I'm, I look forward to what you bring back about okay. that. Um, or the move of Wasak's going on that too. I figured we'd all be in agreement. I just wanted to make sure. Thank you for that, sir. So we still have a couple of minutes. Do you have anything, Mr. Christopher? Little updates? Mm -hmm. Everything for me is just moving. I don't have anything new to report or uh, all the boards and stuff are going well. Uh, we've been able to hold meetings so far. We haven't had to set back any of the airport board meetings or Southwest Washington meetings. And um, this is one of the first times I probably am thankful for Zoom. Uh, right. I like in person, but uh, at least we can keep things going with Zoom. Has the airport remained open through all of this? They have. I don't know what to extent, but I did get a picture last night of some grading that was going on to keep runways open. So they're working hard at it. Do you use de-ice for our runway? I don't know. No, we don't have any de-icing equipment. I know the road department's even having trouble keeping up in the higher elevations, and it's been a tough pull. But I was thankful for, for my drive-in this morning. And it was packed and it was graveled in places where it needed to be. So 
and people were watching their speed, which is nice. I had a, if I may, mm -hmm. Madam Chair, uh, I had a meeting in Dallasport with the, uh, well, sorry, Lyle with the EMS district last week and uh, thought it might be smart to travel down Harms Road to get there. <laughs> yeah, whoops. <laughs> um, snow drifts, yeah. like five feet deep. It was plowed literally one lane. And I get almost to Randall, and here comes a snowplow. So it's like literally backing up for a Ooh. mile and a half <laughs> to pull off um, and chat with Mr. Randall why the plow went by, but uh, I, I'm looking forward to Public Works fixing that section of road, um, which I believe is on the itinerary for this year, so. Mm -hmm. Oh, and then on the way back, Harms Road again, right at Centerville Highway, when I turned on the Harms, two snow plows came behind me, so they're obviously trying to, you know, they're off the main roads now, they're working on the side roads, trying to widen that more than one lane. Um, and I get in front of them quite a ways, and next thing I know, I see a Republic Services dump truck, or, you know, a, a trash truck. And I had, to kind of, I had to literally back up, pull in the driveway to let him pass, which was the only driveway that was remotely cleaned out, literally, again, four-foot drifts. Uh, and kind of warned him that, you know, he might want to, pull in the driveway when I pull out of it and he didn't do it. So I would, I would kind of love to know if he had to back up for two miles down that road, but and the that snow, was the extent of my the snow drifts are still soft. I'm assuming. Oh no, they're ice. Now. Are they icebergs? They're, they're bricks. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you leave the, the, the lane of traffic and you're ripping the tire off your, uh, <laughs> they're wider now. The road is wider and they've done a really good job on it. It's just, and not, not, um, critiquing public works at all for not getting around to that because Harm Road just is not a main thoroughfare and they were working on main thoroughfares and not side roads so they got to it when they got to it I just traveled it before they got to it so we have um, almost a half an hour would you like to move forward into unfinished business to get some of that done um we can. We could. We could uh, undertake new business. It's but, yeah. fairly simple. I got no problem. You want to start with Joel Masden? Yeah. So we have before us a support of letter for Columbia Gorge Regional Housing, um, and we need a motion of support for conversation. Uh, do you have a copy of that I have letter? A copy of the letter. I'm going to say I can't make a motion, second motion, anything. I haven't seen the letter, haven't read the letter. Oh, it's on the emails. Okay. When was that? It was just today. Oh, um, right here. Thank you. Would you like a little bit of background on that? Sure. Um, so Columbia Gorge Affordable Housing has a project in East County uh, that is a remodel of substandard housing that exists today for uh, workforce and low-income people. And it, it's a good project. It needs to be done. Um, it was a quick project that came up on their radar. And I heard from Mr. Madsen late last week, and they were actually looking for some uh, extra funding to put, not as match, but to go with as support uh, for a request for the grant to accomplish that project. I told him the ask was so short, I didn't know if we could get through, um, if we could supply that funding at the county's level. And at a minimum, I suggest he send in two letters and at least he could have a letter of support from the county commissioners for funding for the project to go with their grant. And so today that's what we're looking for is a letter of support from county commissioners for them to apply, at least apply for the grant. So he doesn't miss his funding window. Did we commit $100,000 of housing funds to be leveraged for this project? No. So it would just be the uh, letter of support is, is what uh, I'm talking about. Okay, I see two of them. There's a PDR letter of support 
Klickitat County and then PDR letter of support with with resources. So I want to make sure which one. It's just a Klickitat County with no resources. Okay. Yeah, because we have to have conversations with the assessor, or the auditor, and the treasurer about the funds that those would come from. So uh, too short of a time frame. Um, and it is your district. So. This. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not opposed to the letter of support for them going out and getting funds. Um, the letter of support using our funds is a different story. I need more information on that project. Uh, the last time I heard that project was upside down seven ways to Sunday financially. Um, and I'm not a big believer in throwing taxpayer dollars uh, into a black hole. Um, so before I would uh, be on board with using any of the county's available housing dollars uh, on that project, I believe it would behoove this board to do what it was going to do and use case PETA um, to find out where the general public of this county would like our affordable housing dollars to be spent uh, because I would, um, I'm gonna go out on a limb and say, if we throw more money into Pablo Del Rio and in, in, in Roosevelt, the uh, kitchen workers in White Salmon are not gonna be very happy with us not investing anything there. Um, so, um. now we're on it. Well, and I understand your, your questions and your concerns. Um, since we're not committing the funds or we cannot commit the funds at this time, I won't expand on my conversation about that. But, um, and I have let Mr. Madsen know that uh, with everybody, we have to be involved to move money, the treasurer, the auditor, and then decisions here with the board that we need a lot of lead time. And there's just probably no way you're going to get hold of us a week out and have us be able to successfully move money. Uh, that he can, and it's so hard when grants come up and you want to apply for them and he has time frames. But at this point, working with the county uh, to commit any money, we have to have probably an introduction to the project, come in, show us what the project is, have a discussion with us, and give us a pretty big lead time for accessing money if we can. So in the future, I, I hope to help them. I think they do great work and they do good projects. And this is a necessary project in my mind. But for right now, I think the best we could do is a letter of support that Clickadat County is behind him for that grant. Uh, Madam Chairman, I would make a motion to approve the letter of support um, for the Pueblo Del Rio Housing Preservation Program. I will second it. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Hearing none, motion passes. So Elise will get that letter printed on letterhead and circulate it for us? It is. Okay. 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 Thank you. Only the one letter, not the other letter. <laughs> And we'll get it out to Mr. Madsen ASP today, if we can. Yeah, I think he's gonna. All right. Hello, Mr. Hunter. Oh, thank I, you for coming early. Sure. <laughs> it would have been earlier, but I have block. We have a lot of things going. Just a little. That's right. We actually wanted to. I've showed yeah. uh, Commissioner Toller. Um, when we were doing the, or we're in the process of doing the auditor's office, that was inside the wall. That's paper something. From 1942. Did you put a new one in the wall when you rebuilt? Oh, no, we're, we're not done yet. We could put a new yeah, one. That one and a new one back. It also talks about tax rate there. Yeah, I was looking at that. The county's object. <laughs> <laughs> not a lot has changed, has it? No, uh -huh. it's an old sentinel thing. I was going to. The price of food pizza. has changed. <laughs> I want to keep it at the commissioner's office. So they did tax back then. I know people didn't think so, but there were taxes back then. Thank 
interesting. It's like the, you can tell they didn't do it on purpose or it would have been a nicer paper. Yes. This is, uh, the, they just disposed of their extras <laughs> in the wall. They said, yeah, this will work for insulation. It's like, well, because, yeah, because the pages, just the whole section's ripped off. Yep. I said, it's really cool if they had done it on purpose and it was a exact paper. Frame it on the wall out here. And we found something from 42 when the courthouse was built, so... As I say, it's it's an interesting, I don't know. I'm just a weird history guy. I would I would find a good page out of that. I'd put it in a uh, big uh, frame and a little note on how we got it, and I'd post it in the courthouse right outside the auditor's office is what I'd do, but that's just me. That's not a bad idea. We'll look into that. <laughs> I think the tax thing is really important. Yeah, all 4000 Two hundred seventeen dollars of it, or whatever Trump changer was back then. Ah, uh, but we did tax people back then. Good morning. Good morning. So, department update from Jeff Hunter. Oh, okay. Public Works. Uh we were, we went through consent agendas done. Uh, uh, we pulled I, item number nine. So, if you would like to give us some kind of a uh update or information on that so when we discuss it later we might have more knowledge that would be helpful uh the small works contract for janitorial services we've done that for a long time road pays for that it's roads area that we do in the building is what we've done we always have done that uh when we made the change we used to have three janitors and uh we just have one and a half now basically we have a hybrid position that's a janitor slash tech uh, so that's why we pay him and road pays him and that's been the cost the last couple of contracts so he hasn't actually gone up we've been keeping a steady eye on it. i thought road only pays for roads area they do okay that's, that's that area plus it's the shop they also the guys don't clean the shop and you know i don't expect them to as far as the bathroom and that kind of thing it gets pretty nasty so they actually clean the shop he cleans the gold but, okay but this <laughs> this contract is for a lot more than just roads portion. yes you are right and it always has been we only do roads portion but we keep that we do have that as part of the contract just in case we lose a janitor or something I don't have to go out to bid to get somebody. I could bring him in. If we can't, and we're in the process of trying to hire, we've been pretty steady lately with our janitors. He didn't do any work on those in the past. But if we have a janitor that either leaves or because, you know, we have one main janitor that does this building and does a portion of, of, and, of or does, does the courthouse and does this building, then we have one at the Pioneer Center. Now, if we were to lose one of those people, they were to move on or something, I need to have, I can't just stop everything. So I need to have something as, okay, you take care of this. And then we just move duties around. Like, for instance, if the guy at the Pioneer Center decides tomorrow he wants to retire, I'm not saying he will, he, he's still got time, but let's just use that for instance. If he retires, then I have to take somebody from over here and have him go to the Pioneer Center. And that means I got to backfill that position over here with somebody immediately. Now, when we're down in the slow time, okay, we could probably be. But if it's like now, I can't really take any of the maintenance techs to do that with. So then I would, I would bring him in to clean this building. And the person that cleans this building would go over to the Pioneer. So if I may, for clarification in my head, you have a full contract that allows them to do everything, but you only currently pay them for this part of it. And this is their job description. You just have it here in case you need them for something else, then we'll worry about how to pay them. There. Yes, we never, we never, we have not, I don't say never, we have used them in the past, but we, we didn't last year. We didn't need to. Yeah. If, again, it's for in case we lose a janitor, something major pops up, somebody gets hurt, you know, 
they're out for an extended period of time, I can use him to fill in. If I don't have a price, then I'm stuck at his hourly rate, which is not very cheap these days. I mean, I could still do it, but then I'm stuck at $160 an hour. Pay hundred sixty dollars an hour to have somebody come and clean, but that's the going rate today. For a janitor. For a janitor for us, I'm not saying you know if I was going to get my house done, I would hope it's not one hundred sixty dollars an hour. But you never know. But that's why it's. Never mind. Okay. Um, on the construction side, nothing's nothing's changed much. We're waiting for the weather. We talked to the driller who would like to start, but it's too cold, and you have a chance of breaking the drill rig and the drill bits and everything else when this cold weather. Uh, road design, we're still pretty much working through all that stuff. We're working through moving that stuff forward the big thing as everybody can see is uh the winter reaction um on these both sides were plowing snow and sanding removing trees um west side we had over uh 50 trees blown down a lot of big fur and other things um, you'll see on the back side of this the last picture is a truck stuck on stats a log truck stuck on stats road um, they said it was because the road gave out. The road didn't give out. They were just driving a little too fast. It, slid, it got close to the edge and got sucked off the edge. That was quite a mess. That's the a road was closed for a box. They had to unload the truck log by log um, and then pull the truck out. So, yes, we've been working through some of that. Stuff. So the road didn't give out. They just found the soft shoulder because it got a little too far to the. Yes, they were going too fast, got on the soft shoulder, dropped the tire off. The road did not give out. Um, upcoming facility, our facilities and work events. Um, we're having some issues with our photos. I don't know if anybody noticed. I noticed this morning. They're pine wood and with the change in temperature, because we don't have, you know, it's typical of buildings, you don't have heat source in the hallways. Mm -hmm. Well, the pictures are starting. To move. So a lot of the frame or a lot of the wood backing have started. To, well, we can secure that and have our carpenters go back around and anchor the bottoms. So that'll, but the actual photo itself is starting to roll a little bit. That we will not be able to fix. <laughs> So we'll see how bad it gets. We can talk to the person that provided it. Um, also, they are supposed to be old photos, so that would give it some character. Mm -hmm. But we will we will anchor the bottoms because if you if you walk around and you you look at the photos, you can see where they're starting to warp. Mm -hmm. The bottoms are starting to walk. So I just noticed that today. Um, so we're gonna take care of that. Oh, let's see. Jail replace, same thing. Superior Court walkthroughs are scheduled this week. If they can get here, most of the contractors are from Portland. Um, events we've talked about, fuel lines, same thing. Otters area, framing is complete. Our carpenter's been working on weekends not to disturb the auditor. So their schedule's been switched from Thursday through Sunday. Um uh, HVAC contracts, we put Pioneer Center out to bid in the courthouse. No, oh, there's where my mess was. I thought that thing came in somewhere. And the courthouse we're working on. Um, we have to get them out to bid because the best case scenario, we'll be installing them in the fall. That's the best case if we bid them and award them here shortly. Uh, radio site status is pretty much done. They were the final pay estimates. Um, everything is, the camera's been ripped. Placed. Everything is fine with that, except for some of the software. It's not talking correctly, and it happens to be on the SATA's past end. So they're going to have to. They're going to take a snow machine and go up there this week. Everything's still on budget with SATA's. Yes, okay. we're not. We're done paying. 
separate. There's I will bring that in. Just yes. Sure no, no, we will bring that in. Budget. Yep. Perfect. We'll bring that in and let you know where we stand right. as soon as we get everything in. And uh, we have some other other things. Um, jail temperature. Um, we've turned up the heat. It's 90 degrees going in now. But remember, we're dealing with negative nine airflow from outside. So it's very similar when it's a cold building. It's this cold. It's a concrete building. It's hard to get heat. Um, and also, it's no different than when it's 105, getting it to cool in the summer. This is no different than trying to heat 100 or 9 degrees, negative 9 degrees. Is there a different... Um temperature control or heat unit for the jail than there is for the rest of the courthouse? Yes, they're two different units. They are two different units. Um, we'll get it a little warm. We're, you know, we're going to get it warmer. It's 60 degrees. Um, and we've kind of, we've cranked up the temperature a little bit, not just in the jail, but everywhere. Um, which a little hesitant about i mean but it was cool the problem is is when you crank up the temperature the cost goes up quite a bit so we will keep it monitored and hopefully the temperatures will come back down and we will turn the heat back down um and that's for all the buildings not just the jail right and it has came to the commissioner's attention. Yes, I about saw those that. temperatures. Um, and I did coordinate and talk to the sheriff's department. And they said they do have extra blankets that they're handing out and uh, long underwear, stocking hats. And so I think if people ask. Yeah, we coordinated with Lauren over there too. And let him know that, you know, this is, we just checked it again. Um, we have it cranked up to 90 degrees. This is the best for, you know, you're not going to get it any higher than that. It's not going to hit 90. It's not going to be anywhere near that, but Again, it's uh, cold air coming in and re even recycled air. It's still cold. Um, we had some road damages. Cook Road, tree came down. Stump root wad ripped up the road when it came down. So uh, Cook Road is now 10 feet. Um, it's, we lost four feet. So we will, um, we will take care of that when we get a chance. It's going to be a little while. Um, and uh, I can't remember, we had another road we had issues on, but the timber company's going to fix that. They actually did it. So, and they did some damage on Stats Road too, pulling them out. But they will take care. They said they will take care of that. So they are working with us. Um, elevator improvements. So we're, as we talked, we're getting to that with putting the walkway and everything. They have to, sh what that means is they have to shut the elevators down. Um, we could have done it at night or something like that, but I'm not paying them premium time at $400 an hour. Premium time for that would probably be, you know, $600 an hour. That's just what they get. Um, so there's five hours shutdown scheduled for this Wednesday at the, at the Pioneer Center, Thursday at the jail, and Friday at the courthouse on those elevators. So they can put the the uh, railing around the top so you don't fall off at night. Yeah. Not that we fall, not that there's somebody up there very often, but it's a requi L and I requirement, so we don't have any choice. Um, so yeah, that's where we stand there. And I just wanted to give every uh, give the board a heads up. Uh, we've heard from uh, the demo derby, which is fine. Uh, we're going to meet with them in February, but they want to have a meeting every month or maybe by month, you know, and I'm like, okay, that takes a lot of staff time. We don't do that for everybody. So we're going to see if we can get it accomplished. Um, they have a lot of changes they would like to make. Again, that can be very costly depending on what they want. Um, and we haven't, I haven't actually sat down, so I get into them until we actually sit down and tell them what the ramifications are and then they may come back and say i think we should have it done we'll go to the board that time we can talk about the cost because if we're moving a bunch of stuff that's been sitting there for a long time there's a lot of cost to that so again we'll see we'll talk through it maybe we don't need to do that um and that's all i
Go ahead. Um, floating another idea I have uh, to see if there's any board um, interest. We have items on our uh, case appeal list uh, to be able to use 09 funding. They have to be on our case appeal list. The only thing the county has on the case appeal list is the airport. Uh, and I don't know whether it would be this board's uh, want, um, like it's my want to uh, put other county um, issues or improvements on the case PETA list. I think there are improvements that we can do to the fairgrounds, um, bleachers and whatnot that can be written up and put on the case PETA list because they are economic development. Uh, that then we may be able to use 09 funds for those improvements. Um, and I guess my point is if, if it is something that the board sees an interest in, we would need our public works director to look at potential projects at the fairgrounds to be able to give us those so we can put them on the case of PETA list for further consideration. Uh, that's how that works. Uh, but if they never make the list, they never get considered. Um, so, uh, as a board of three, I need a second vote to have our public works person, uh, come up with some ideas, um, including potentially extended bleachers or additional bleachers or whatever else he feels out there to bring forth to the board, to ask the board what it may want to submit to the case speed board. Unless I'm incorrect, I think we're still kind of in discussions about those $09 uh, with the involvement of KCPTA and um, how that all shifts out, or that just might still be my learning curve of where we're at with some of that. I did talk to Heather last week for a little bit. Um, so I don't think I'd be ready to move forward to comment on anything like that till I get to the end of where I'm at of applying those O9 dollars in reality, the authority of where they go and who's applying them. Okay. Um, all I was asking for was totally separate from what you were talking about. Uh, in, in order to mm -hmm. ask for any dollars, you have to have a, you have to be on the, the list project list the cities and county and whatnot bring forward that list of these are the projects we would like to accomplish in the next 10 years um, and they just go on the case of PETA list when they're voted in by that board whether they come forward and ask for money later is a different subject I'm just asking for projects to be put on a list not funded okay but the 09 dollars were brought up and that's where I went off track I understand the KCPTA list, and I understand there's multiple sources of funding as we roll through trying to get those uh, accomplished. Um, and I know that the cities and the fair board um, bring their projects forward, but you're asking for our approval for our public works to make an alternative list to add to that list? Is that what you're asking for? No. Okay. I'm good. And the fair board has never asked for $09. And we're back to $09 again. This, so. this is all about the case of PETA list. Okay. Um, the county provide or makes recommendations to go on that list for airport improvements mm -hmm. uh, for $09, but it has never made a recommendation for any of its other properties for $09. I'm only asking that we allow public works to look at the fairground as another county property that provides economic development because believe it or not, more things happen outside of the Dallas Port Airport than happen within it, that we add more projects to that list for future consideration. I'm not asking for any money. I'm not asking for any specific projects. I'm asking for more economic items to be placed on a list for consideration for the case of Peter Board to consider. Do you have a comment? Yeah. Uh, so we have a case of PETA meeting next Tuesday, and I think this would be a good conversation to have with the case of PETA board. Um, from my experience in, in the history of what case of PETA does, it usually pays for 
pumps and pipes and roads and infrastructure um, so that further economic development, private investment can be put in there for uh, creating jobs in Klickitat County. Um, as far as I know, we haven't put any into the uh, fairgrounds because that isn't putting in pumps and pipes for businesses to come and build like at a, at a, at the airport or, um, you know, an industrial area. So that would be a change of direction, I think, from how those dollars have been spent in the past. And I think it would be a great conversation for the case of PETA board um, to have that conversation about, um, because that's just a different direction than I think we've ever worked. And so I would like to have that conversation with them, and then we could have a conversation with Jeff after that. But if the case of PETA board is feeling that, you know, the dollars have been put towards building infrastructure so that we can uh, build it so they will come, um, and that continues to be the direction, then, then I don't know if putting bleachers at the fairgrounds when there's other grant dollars available for doing community, you know, community projects like that. Um, that might not be the best use of those dollars. And, uh, and I'm in agreement with uh, Mr. Anderson. And in researching it, I went into the RCWs, which directs where we do that money. And I think uh, we haven't been errant in that. We've stayed along what the RCWs require of us for allotting those dollars to whom and what for what. Uh, so I... I would be glad to listen to a discussion from the KCP to board next week if we want to continue it to there and then make a decision. Does that work for you? That's this board's decision. Okay. So we will make sure that gets on the KCP to agenda for next week. Okay. Anything else for Mr. Hunter? Okay. Thank you for, Thank for you. waiting. <laughs> Don't get your paper. Might be kind of fun to think about putting something back in that wall. <laughs> yeah. We'll look at things to Gosh, do with it. I like the idea of putting it in the courthouse, saying we found it, and yes, we raised, yes, they did taxes. If there's any uh, voter stuff in there that would be kind of funny if there was yeah it really if it was an work. election issue or something that could be interesting um having uh that clear understanding of 65 and 45 um i would make a motion uh, to approve uh, the item in the bill i'll second motion all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Hearing none, motion passes. Consent agenda number nine is approved. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Good place. All right. So, Our next department update is scheduled for 10-15 with the Sheriff's Department. If we have any continued conversations. Um... Uh, we have the unfinished business for the board positions. Do we want to start in on that? Sure, we could go through them one by one and, and fit them in, get as much done as we can before our Sheriff is present. Oh, my list of names. Yes. I have a copy of the county's policy on appointments and functions of That's boards and committees. Um, this was 2021 resolution. It has mine and Commissioner Anderson's names signed on it. If you turn to page three, I have a highlighted section here that I would like to read. Um, that says on boards, commissions, and committees that have positions based on geographical nature aligned with the commissioner district, the commissioner for that district shall submit his or her top two ranked candidates for the whole board consideration. 
Um, this is exactly what I've said multiple times when I've made um, the previous motions to appoint to the Planning Commission. This is the policy that I was pointing out when I asked the board if it had intentions to follow county policy or if it was going to not follow county policy. Uh, it is my hope that this board will set a good example for other electeds and for employees that this board holds accountable uh, in not violating county policy, that this board does not violate county policy um, and accepts the recommendations that I've made uh, to the Planning Commission seat. That did we have any new applications come in? We did leave it open one more week. Hmm. That's a good candidate. Did you guys reach out or did he just happen to... That that is a really good candidate and someone I never even thought of. And is that the disability board? And no other applications. Okay. So would we like to start with the Columbia Gorge Regional Airport Board? One position open. Um, we have Tim Ernest. Um, with the Columbia River Gorge Regional Airport for the one position. Um, uh, for the left board, we have Frank uh, Randall, um, civil service. Um, we have Russ Hansen in district two is reapplied and Ian Perry um, in district three, only applications. Um, and so since those are the only people to fill those boards, um, I would move to fill all those boards with those those names. Yeah. I would uh, once again, not second that motion since that motion would be in violation of county policy. Uh, the If you want to appoint to the Columbia Gorge Regional Airport that is not a uh, regional appointee, uh, I have no problem with that. The left disability board is not a regional appointee. I have no problem with that. Um, the civil service commission is a regional board and two names need to be brought forward by the commissioner for that district. Um, and so I cannot get behind your um, motion since I did not bring forward any names for the civil service position. So when we discussed this back in 2021, that was if there was a bunch of applications. If you only have one applicant, when it's done, don't you have to accept that applicant? Or you, you're saying you just can say, no, we're not going to fill the position. I have not looked for anyone to fill any of these positions because I don't know whether the board is going to accept um, the offers that I make. Um, I believe the Civil Service Commission appointment is a important position. They need to have some kind of background since they're going to be interviewing law enforcement candidate type scenario that um, I believe it's not just, oh, we got an applicant from John Doe. Nobody knows John Doe, but here, John Doe, uh, have a very important board position. Uh, if that's what this board wants to do, it would be in violation of county policy, but it is more than willing or more than happy to do so. Um, can. I think where we've gotten ourselves is a matter of interpretation. And for me, um, listening to uh, your interpretation, Mr. Christopher, uh, differs with my interpretation of that sentence and the and the language that's in there. So I feel like I'm at a point where we're probably, um, I would like to move forward with the, in my opinion, I'd like to move forward with the boy, boards that only have one position so they can keep moving and have people that are dedicated to serve in these positions. Uh, other than that, I feel like I'm going to have to reach out to our legal counsel for interpretation of that paragraph. Um, I don't believe that's what that paragraph says. I believe it's 
to submit your two candidates, but we have to also honor those for the process that we offer. And we have willing people from across this county that are willing to drive into nighttime meetings and serve on a volunteer board. And to say that why even open up for applications if it's going to be interpreted that uh, you think we should just offer up two applicants from each district and we move that way. That's not what the whole system is set up for. That's not what we've asked the public to do. But because of this one sentence that says the district from that district shall submit his top two ranked candidates to the board for consideration. Consideration well, doesn't mean I that would, they aren't considered with all the other applicants. I, I would hope that the legal interpretation looks at the intent of the policy of which um, I drafted it. So I'm pretty sure I know what its intent is. Um, if this in, board wants to change the policy, it can. Um, but I, I would agree with you, the ones that are not of a geographical nature uh, should not be much of an issue to get approved at this time. Uh, the ones of a geographical nature, we obviously have. Um, I don't know that we have any issues with the ones being appointed to the District 1 and 2, but it sounds like we definitely have the issues with the ones that I would like to appoint to District 3. So moving closer to our time with the sheriff, and I see they've came over early. Um, could we set this back on the agenda for after lunch? And we I'll currently have a motion and a second. We're in discussion. We should at okay. least finish that off. Okay. I don't believe we have a second, sir. Oh, we don't have a second. The motion can die. The motion dies. So uh, give me a little time over lunchtime and we'll take this back up after lunch. If that works. Okay. So if you guys would like to come forward from our sheriff department, we have Bob Songer and his crew for sheriff update. Layers of clothes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Everybody hear me? Uh, good morning. And uh, start off with uh, the sheriff's uh, update. There were a total of 387 calls for service from January 1st to January 15th. In addition to the calls for service, deputies served a total of 29 civil papers during the same time period. On December 4th, uh, 10 a.m., I attended the anti-harassment training provided by the County Human Resource Department, which is very excellent. Uh, on December 9th at approximately 6 p.m., Clickitat County Sheriff's deputies and posse deputies took part in the Goldendale Christmas Candy Cane Parade. The parade was a great success. Actually, there's a tremendous turnout, which kind of surprised me due to the weather, but it was, uh, it was a nice parade. As a constitutional sheriff of Clickitat County, it is my duty to protect our citizens' constitutional rights and God-given liberties. And you've probably heard me say that many times. I believe the federal government and Washington state government threatening to arrest citizens for killing a wolf that is attacking or killing livestock and domestic pets, which is the personal property of citizens, is illegal and unconstitutional. They are federally protected in our county. And uh, and I have informed ranchers and people that if, if they uh, end up shooting a wolf that is in the process of attacking their livestock or domestic pets or in self-defense, 
call us, we'll take the report and we'll deal with the federal government on that issue. Uh, I believe it violates the individual's Fifth Amendment and Washington State's Constitution. Under the, that, you have a right to life, liberty, and property. And that livestock is your property or those domestic pets are your property. Now, I've been told that that's not, they appealed that to courts and courts haven't ruled that way, but that, that doesn't mean that just because the courts rule one certain way, doesn't mean that we continue and allow our citizens to be violated, uh, their rights to be violated. As sheriff, I will not enforce that. Uh, I will not enforce laws that appear to be unconstitutional and violate the rights of our citizens. And uh, attached to that is the press release on that. And uh, I have a press release I put out as juvenile sex and kidnap offenders release from registration under the new Washington State Law 19, uh, 1394. And, and that was, uh, that law was signed into effect by Governor Inslee and took effect, uh, effect on November 1st of 2023. And bear with me just a second here. We'll quickly get through this. Uh, it's titled Juven Juvenile Sex Kidnapping Offenders, Please Release from Registration New Washington State Law, House Bill 1394. In 2023, Washington State legislators and senators passed House Bill 1394 to address the length of time a juvenile is required to register as a sex offender or kidnap offender. This new law was signed by Governor Inslee, effect, uh, taking effect on November 1st, 2023. In the state of Washington, uh, adult and se uh, juvenile sex offenders and kidnap offenders are required to register with within three days with the sheriff's office in the county they will be living in after being released from confinement. Level one sex offender, kidnap offender is considered low risk of reoffending in the community. A level two sex offender, kidnap offender is considered moderate risk of reoffending in the community. Level three sex offender, kidnap offender is considered a high risk of reoffending in the community. The new law, uh, House Bill 1394, level two and level three sex kidnap offenders will only have to register with the sheriff's office for two to three years after being released from confinement. Within my 54 years in law enforcement career, I have encountered numerous violent sex, uh, juvenile sex offenders. It is my opinion that the release of these juvenile offenders is a viable and real safety concern for our community. Once the offender is no longer required to register with law enforcement due to House Bill 1394, the children and adults will be at risk of being victimized by these offenders. When offenders are not required to register, the sheriff's office will have no idea where these offenders are living or working within our county. Currently, Klickitat County has 85 sex offenders registered with the Sheriff's Office. Of this population, there are 10 offenders that are qualified under 1394 House Bill for release into our community. These 10 span all three levels of sex offenders, which includes level one, three offenders, five level two offenders and four level one offenders. The current level two and three offenders, sex offenders list can be located at Lickitack County Sheriff's Office website. Juvenile convicted of sex or kidnap offenses outside, and this is an important issue. Juvenile convicted or sex offenders or kidnap offenders outside of, convicted outside of Washington state or under tribal or federal jurisdiction that move into our county must continue to register. However, in our county, uh, in our state, if they're convicted, they don't have to register after two or three years. Doesn't make a whole lot of sense on that. If you disagree with this law, please call or email the Washington State legislators and senators 
who voted for House Bill 1394, even if they are not from our legislative district. It is imperative, because this is a statewide law, it is imperative to let them know your safety concerns about risk they have sub uh, subject the children and adults in our community. I am proud to let you know our District 14 legislators, Gina Mossberger, Chris Corey, and Senator Curtis King did not vote for this law. Now, attached to that is a public safety story that was ran in the newspaper. And uh, I don't know if you had a chance to see it, but in there, it kind of goes over the same thing I just explained here, but it goes into more detail. Also attached to that is every legislator and senator that voted for this, their name, email, and phone number. They encourage people to call and let them know that they're, that law is putting their, their uh, community at risk. Um, let me get through this. Got one more press release that was uh, authorized Eric Anderson to do this press release. He did an outstanding job. At about 9.30 a.m., and this would have been on January 11th, I believe it was, uh, about 9.30 a.m. today, Klickitat County Dispatch received a call from the Klickitat School District. School staff were oh. who were monitoring cameras observed what appeared to be two males approaching the school property and one appeared to have a, armed with a gun. The school was placed on lockdown as a precautionary measure. Law enforcement officers from several agencies responded to the campus, including the Klickitat County Sheriff's Office, Washington State Patrol, Fish and Wildlife, and medical personnel were staged nearby. Officers arrived and conducted a thorough investigation. The two parties were in, uh, located and interviewed. They were both cooperative and neither had a gun. It was determined that no threat was posed to the school and no criminal offense was occurred. But fortunately, it turned out to be a false alarm. But all the more reason I'm pushing for the schools to allow us to help them out by deputizing and putting certain teachers or principal or whoever uh, through NRA qualification and uh, and by having a deputy uh, special deputies commission, it'd be legal to have a firearm on campus. And of course it would be concealed. They wouldn't be running around the hallways and stuff, but we'd have somebody there. I'd like to tell people that if we had an active shooter, we would be there within 30 seconds, and save the day and we'd be heroes. But we all know that's a bunch of malarkey. That's not going to happen as much as we'd like to see it happen. And we cannot afford, from what I understand, from the county budget, to hire um, police officers to be in the schools. The number of schools we have, that would be over millions of dollars that we'd have put out for additional deputies. And I understand that. We don't have that money. So let's plug that hole, that, that possibility, with trained people that not only know the school layout, but most likely would know the shooter. So uh, it could stop kids from being shot and killed prior to us ever getting on the scene. And to me, that's a success. So anyway, we we have three schools currently that are working with us on those, but there's several other schools that uh, mm -hmm. reluctant for whatever reason, but we're gonna keep campaigning it to see if we can get them to get on board. So I'll, uh, Get off my stump here and turn it over to the undersheriff unless you've got questions. Good morning. You guys have any questions before we begin? Okay. So the new year started off with its first call coming in within one minute into 2024. Dispatch received 32 calls in the first 24 hour period, with 16 of those being handled by KCSO. I am glad to have 2023 behind me and looking forward to a new year. This year, I'm focusing on areas that need improvement. This list is growing, but I've started first with building a spreadsheet that will be used to forecast and track training for each of the deputies. This spreadsheet includes dates, locations, and costs of each training. The deputies will also list if they've already been certified in that specific area. Last year, deputies completed a survey monkey that we used to determine 
the career goals of each deputy. And then we collected that data and put it into a uh, spreadsheet. With limited training dollars available, we will be relying on any free training opportunities, in-house training, virtual and hosting training. Each deputy is required to have a minimum of 24 hours of training per year. And we've identified core training that each deputy should have. And I'm making a list of those who still need that core training. This will take several years to complete. We will also begin working on inventorying all the items that we can surplus, which include vehicles and miscellaneous items. The POTS building will see some improvements as we transition one room into a deputy's room. Our impound yard needs some attention and we will gradually work on removing old cars and items that we no longer need in cases. We'll be mapping out marine patrol events that will include boat safety inspections as well as patrolling the waterways. Traffic safety emphasis will be held throughout the year and we'll be attending community events across the county where we'll be using the Posse and the Posse Scouts to assist. I'll be creating various charts so we can watch for trends and criminal activities, types of calls that are received. And collecting data will provide us with the information that we can use when submitting grants for educating the public and using in the various reporting that is mandated by the state. We look forward to the new year and what it will bring. I wanna add that I, I was looking at some of our training costs from last year. We have a very limited training budget. A lot of the trainings, just the training itself, cost between five and a, $500 and $1,000 to attend the training. And if it's a week-long training, it costs upwards of $1,200 for one deputy to attend. So I only have 5,000 in travel expenses this year and an $8,000 travel budget and a minimum of 408 hours of travel or of training to get completed. So we're gonna get pretty creative this year, but, and that's one reason I think making the spreadsheet will make it a little easier to, to track, but we're gonna to have to figure something out. We ha do have a lot of in-house experts um, to do some of our training, but, even doing an in-house training, if we do it while the guys are on shift, we still have to have coverage on the road. And so we still have to pay out overtime. So we still have, if it's a two hour training, we're paying out one shift to cover um, the training while the guys are out doing their training and vice versa. When the guys are done doing their training, they cover for the night shift two hours so that that shift can complete their training. Cause we can't leave the road um, unmanned. So um, those are costs and stuff that we just can't avoid. We are mandated by the state for this 24 hours of training. So regardless, even if it is in-house training, there is still quite a bit of cost to it, substantial overtime costs, and then paying the people who are putting on those trainings uh, their time. So uh, DT, we have two D and T two DT instructors, and it really does take both of them to, to work together and provide a really solid class. So those are some of the challenges we'll be tackling this year. Take advantage of video training. Yeah, we're gonna work uh, as much virtual training as we can, but there again, you know, there's still gonna be some costs related to that. Uh, the county risk pool, has a, quite a bit of training um, that they offer and we've taken advantage of that. I had Rob check for me if we could host some of their trainings, that way we could just put more people into some of it. Um, unfortunately, their 2024 um, calendar is full for hosting. So we're gonna look at see what we can do for 2025. So um, they've been busy with the weather, they've been assisting people. Um, Deputy Warren, I nicknamed him Timber Tony. He spent hours and hours the other night cleaning trees off roadways. Uh, public works, at, obviously the road crews have been busy and he carries a chainsaw with them. So instead of calling out County Road to clear the trees, him and the other deputies spent hours and hours and hours cleaning trees off the roadways. And he thought he was doing one tree, the one group of it and I think there was six or eight trees that he took out so you know he's, they're out there in this nice lovely blizzard that we've been having and cold going above and beyond the call of duty so I do appreciate all their 
um, hard work that they're putting out there. Any questions? No, make sure you tell them thank you from all of us too, because that opens up emergency routes and thank you. Uh, keeps things going. Right. Yeah, there's been a lot of medical calls. Mm -hmm. A lot of people that can't afford to have their driveways plowed. So it becomes a burden on, on first responders. So you're up. Good morning. Um, before I go through my written um, things that I have to bring up, um, I just want to let you know that the jail is having problems with temperature. Uh, it's very cold in there. Uh, concrete walls, concrete floors, concrete ceilings. It uh, takes a little more than normal to keep it warm. We've issued long underwear to all the inmates and they all got three blankets now, um, but it's very cold. I understand that in the past, jail staff has had the ability to adjust the temperature when it's needed um, because who knows better than them, they're in there all the time. Um, the way it is now, we have to get a hold of somebody either on the weekends in the, at the middle of the night or whatever to get the temperature changed. But it's been a problem for a while now and um, it hasn't gotten any better. It's very cold in there. We have some written complaints from inmates and threats of litigation as well. So just want to bring that to your attention. I also want to mention it's cold enough that the glucometer used for doing blood sugar levels, it's too cold for it to work. So that's not that's not a good thing at all. And our the Carson deputies are running around with coats on. It's so cold. Do you... I'm sorry. Did you, it's cold. Did you um, hear Mr. Hunter this morning that he turned up the power oh. over there and it's now blowing 90 degrees out of the uh, out of the heater unit? How much of it's actually getting into you right. in the break and the whatever? Well, but it, it's fully cranked. I'll we're, I'll walk in. I'll check the girls' lobby bathroom is pretty indicative of what's going on in the jail because it's the same system. And when I walked in there this morning, it was freezing. Like super cold. It's I I would imagine with the cold temperatures we have, even the heater set on ninety, right. um, may or may not work. Right, and even if it does work, it's probably going to take an awful lot of time right. to warm up the brick. Well, I suggested. I know you're opposed to um, a heater, but for the med room, it might be a necessity in order to keep our medical. Um, equipment at a temperature that's operable for, for me currently the county says no to space heaters but you can do whatever you want but as a fire person that i know you are you're not going to plug it into a surge protector so i'd be okay about that. yeah no i wouldn't go into a surge <laughs> protector <laughs> no i i just think it's necessary for the medical equipment and stuff so and they this morning they turned it up Tonight is that this morning or yesterday, but it's been turned up real recently. Okay, good. Thank you. You might want to reach out to Jeff to find out because he he informs us that it's okay. full throttle at ninety degrees coming out of it. <laughs> okay. How much of that gets through the pipes and through the bricks? We don't know yet. Right. But... All right. Well, that's good to hear. Okay. Um, current inmate status as of this morning, we have thirty four people in custody. Three people are in Eastern State Hospital receiving mental health treatment. Um, on employees, we are just about to the end of the hiring process for our last open position in the jail. Our control board operator applicant is doing the last step and having a polygraph exam later this week. Once that's passed, we will be bringing that person on board to begin training at the jail. <clears throat> There's no outside training necessary for a control board operator, so we can jump right into that uh, with no added expense. Um, RFP, the request for proposal that I told you about at our last meeting, um, you guys should have gotten a copy of that. Um, this is for updating our medical records and inmate prescription uh, ordering, taking it from physical paper to the cloud. And as I said before, the, the jail is full of paper, uh, paper medical records, paper sheets for prescription drugs, uh, when meds are dispersed to inmates, it's recorded by hand with paper um, and a pencil. 
Uh, some inmates have multiple files for multiple years. When records need to be sent to our contract medical provider, they have to be pulled out of the physical file, scanned, and then emailed. When meds need to be ordered, my staff writes an email to our medical provider, who then calls the pharmacy with the order. Updating the jail medical records and medical ordering system to the digital age is just good common sense. It will cut down on mistakes. It provides automatic reminders of the medication needs of inmates, along with streamlining the ordering and reordering process. It keeps track of the inventory and dispersal of meds with a handheld bar code scanner. Having a system that allows our staff and our medical provider access to the same record online will eliminate the hundreds of monthly emails and phone calls back and forth. It will also cut down on the time staff spent spend doing med medical, um, allowing them to move on to other tasks. I received a letter from our jail medical provider that I provided uh, you last month where he stated, I'm reaching out, and I quote, I'm reaching out to support ask for the ability to streamline our jail facility with an electronic system. We are very antiquated in how we can store, send, order, and review medical information. Please let me know how I can help make this happen and feel free to call me and discuss the benefits further." Unquote. Uh, the RFP has been reviewed by the prosecutor's office and with the board's approval, we will put it out to the public as soon as possible. As with most things, year after year, the cost of goods and services goes up and the cost of medical is no different. The new contract with the jail's medical provider has a modest increase of $500 per month um, for this year and is set to stay the same for the life of the new contract, which is four years. Keeping in mind that we are on an ever tightening budget and we have some new projects we need for the jail, I had a meeting with our medical provider, Brian B., the person who wrote that letter that I just quoted, and I asked him if he would uh, eliminate his contract price increase for the entire year of 2024 if we were able to get the online medical record system, and he did not hesitate to do that. So for 2024, his fees stay the same as they have been uh, if we get set up with that online medical records and online pharmaceutical ordering that uh, totally eliminates the $6,000 this year of his price increase. I mean, you, you just never know unless you ask, right? Uh, pharmacy, last week I talked with Goldendale Pharmacy about returning unused prescriptions for a refund. And they will only take back pills in unopened packages only. Historically, we have received inmate medication in prescription bottles and when someone leaves the jail, we usually have leftover medication that we just have to dispose of. After talking with the pharmacist, she's going to start using bubble packs from now on with one pill in each so that we can return any unused unopened packs to the pharmacy for a full refund. And she is not going to charge the jail anymore for doing this. Um, I do not know yet how much this will save us, but I'm sure it's not going to be insignificant. Um, we received cleaning supplies, laundry soap, fabric softener, dishwashing, detergent, hand sanitizer, gloves, brooms, mops, among a few other things from Home Depot. And we get those things on an in, at an institutional price. Since we eliminated the use of sheets in the jail last year, we no longer need to use bleach in the laundry. That has and will save us money going forward. I also noticed that we were using fabric softener in the laundry. Since we're only laundering jail uniforms and heavy blankets, not fine fabrics and linens, I eliminated the ordering of fabric softener. That alone will save our budget $1,245 and help our environment at the same time by not dumping 55 gallons a year of fabric softener um, into our sewer system through the washing machine. Life-saving technology. Um, I'm always looking for ways to make our jail safer and reduce the risk of liability on the county and the taxpayers. So when I became aware of a heartbeat and breathing monitor for jails, I was very interested. This relatively new technology consists of a small unit installed in the ceiling of a cell. 
It's connected to a monitor in the control room. The unit in the ceiling monitors the breathing and heart rate of the person in that cell, and it sends that information to the control room monitor. If the inmate's heartbeat or respiratory goes outside the parameters that are set by our medical provider, either up or down, a visual and audible alarm goes off, uh, alerting staff that an inmate is in medical trouble so they can respond immediately with life-saving measures. I checked into this and to get three of these monitors installed in our holding cells, which is where we keep most critical inmates. Uh, it's going to be approximately $19,000 for the first year, but it drops to, 19, to $900 for each unit every year after that for uh, licensing and software updates. Be because these units have been proven to save lives and reduce risk, the county's risk pool will reimburse the county $5,000 towards the installation. I've also reached out to some of our corporate suppliers to see if they would be willing to step up uh, with more grants and I will keep trying uh, that route for funding as well. In closing, I know that improvements that we need to do in the jail, like the online medical records and the heart monitors cost money but they are very necessary and I'm doing all that I can to cut costs on things we can do without and to eliminate waste in order to make our jail both safer and more efficient. I appreciate your support. And if you have any questions, I will do my best to answer them. Was that 19,000 per each unit or 19,000 total? Total. And then it's 900 per each unit per year though? Yes, sir. Okay. We talked before about your bands that monitor, mm -hmm. um, and that's moving forward okay. Uh, those, <laughs> I looked into those, and I looked into this fixed system okay. in the ceiling. Uh, the bands, I believe it was two thousand dollars each okay. every year after the first year. Okay, it was so this a lot is a more better expensive. option. Yeah, and then your wand. The wand. There was a wand system that you were going to be able to use. Oh, for the. the uh, medications correct yes that that um, goes along with the online medical records okay system. okay yeah. and is that something similar to what Courtney was doing for probation she had talked to us about having something similar for when uh, clients come in they can be wanted to know kind of where they're at um, mm -hmm. so I didn't know if you had combined efforts or this was similar. oh was it are you talking about the the um, mechanical sniffer for drugs? Mm -hmm. Is that what you're talking yes. about? Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. So the mechanical sniffer for drugs, I looked into it. It's $70,000 for one unit. Mm -hmm. And at this point, we don't have $70,000 to spend. However, I think that um, seeing what's happening in other jails and uh, voting, I think even if the county could figure out a way to purchase one and we could use it in different settings, um, the jail down in Marion County is no longer uh, doing any mail intake. They send it to a third party facility because the drugs coming in the mail are so um, is putting their staff at risk. And we face that problem here too. You don't know if something's been soaked. Um, and of course, I'm sure the auditor has spoke to some degree of, you know, the threats coming in in the ballots. So it's a device that could be actually utilized by different departments, not just uh, the jail or patrol. Okay. So it's something we're going to have to figure out how to fund and start, again, finding somebody can write a grant, because I'm sure there's grant money out there. Um, the insurance fund does cover, I believe it's 40 or 50,000 of it. So we'll see how well, they offered 12,000. <laughs> so they gave everybody else 40 and 50, so. Mm. Mm. more negotiations go on uh, I, I am very it is nice to have the risk pool so involved though I mean they've got all this training opportunity and I think that's really beneficial I think that's not something mm -hmm. we've had before so um, it's kind of nice to that they supply some money for some of these things so 
Um, I'll read. And if I may, before you move on to yeah. budgety stuff, um, if you're thinking that your budget for training is inadequate, I would suggest in next year's budget process, you change the number to what you feel is adequate. Uh, we definitely will. Um, this will, I think creating the spreadsheet, it'll give me some mm -hmm. accurate costs of what, you know, what our reality is on it. Um, I didn't take that time to do the last year. I've just, you know, we, and every other year we're going to have costs for EVOC. EVOC cost us about $10,000. Um, luckily that's not an every year expense, but it is next year on top of their other training. So, so yeah, we're definitely going to be uh, maintaining, you know, the, there's so much cost in hotel and food. Those ho some of those hotels want an arm and a leg, even on a government expense and are, we're not allowed to spend that much. And so then you're hotel hunting and, you know, you're not always getting, it's really difficult to put deputies into a place that's, you know, um, wrench. They were law enforcement that have to arrest <laughs> half the people there. Yeah. You know. Right. <laughs> Some of those hotels have extra benefits, I guess is a nice way to put it. <laughs> so it is definitely something we're going to be, um, looking it hard at so um if i could jump in real quick yeah absolutely um under the current law as i understand it and i think gina and chris and senator curtis they're all working to get that improved for us in law enforcement but right now as i understand the law if your car was stolen and you report it stolen it goes into the system and a deputy or any law enforcement officer falls in behind that car, runs a plate and comes back stolen. And the guy punches it when he tries to pull him over, takes off, we're not allowed to chase. Bizarre, absolutely bizarre. But now under, I understand and I apologize, I don't have the house bill, Senate bill on it, but I understand also where the governor's coming from and trying to do the training commission um, when they have, when an officer responds to a call and uh, you got to report all uh, deadly force incidents, whether anybody's injured or shot or killed or any of that. The mere fact that you pull your gun and order somebody to drop a gun and he drops a gun. Nobody's shot. Nobody's injured. He's taken into custody. We have to report that to the state that deadly force was used. And what I think is going on, and that's just my humble opinion, is they're building up stats. And uh, so the Washington State Sheriff's Association is loggerheads with some of these new laws are coming out with through the governor and the training commission. And they also make it a big push, my understanding, is to do away with elected sheriffs by saying if you're elected as a sheriff by the people of the county, uh, you have to complete the academy or you can no longer serve as sheriff. They're taking the people's rights away from what they're elected. Uh, I believe the Constitution, by its mere fact, and I know there'll be distractors and won't believe the way I do. But I believe the fact when the people elect a position, whether it's county commissioner, sheriffs, or whatever, the people have spoken. And in the sheriff situation, that mere election gives that sheriff the ability to carry firearms, to carry a route of arrest, whether they go through the academy or don't. But that isn't the way it stands today. And the academy is pushing through the governance to more and more control over sheriffs. And uh, be quite candid with you, in my opinion, they would like to see the entire counties throughout the state go with home rule, whether sheriff or any elected position, uh, except prosecutor, can be appointed by the board. When they get to that stage, you got nothing more than like police chiefs, and I've served in that position. You don't serve, the people are not your boss, the mayor or the council is your boss. 
And a big difference between elected sheriffs. And I encourage people, do not ever fall into that trap where you're talked out of having an elected sheriff. Because if the sheriff is not good, they don't like his positions, there's recall and vote him out of office. But the people still have a say so. Anyway, I'll get over this thing. There's actually a new bill out, uh, House Bill 2027 and companion bill, Senate Bill 5905, uh, talks about the uh, certification background checks for sheriffs, police chiefs, marshals, reserve officers, and volunteers. So that's another bill that we'll be following closely this year. I can tell you that the other party locally is very closely following that and has already apparently um, circulated uh, lots of emails uh, because it was brought to my attention. They, those emails were brought to my attention this weekend. So, uh, I know Franklin County Sheriff's been very vocal about that bill, and he's got a lot uh, he's putting out on his Facebook. Um, there's just a lot of bills I think that we really, it's tough to follow them all and know what's coming out there, but uh, we definitely need to keep an eye on some of these. They're, they directly impact our department and the county and the way we serve our citizens. So, uh, If I may, for me anyway, I can't speak for the board of the whole. Um, I would be very interested if you guys had a list uh, of bills that you're supporting or opposing. Um, I would be more than happy to bring them up to the board of the whole to see if the county will uh, weigh in and testify on bills like we did last year for you. Perfect. Thank, Thank you. you. And always bring them forward. We have POTS and associates that work with us in Olympia. Uh, Wasac uh, is, you know, everybody's interested in what we're interested in. So okay. Let us know from your department always. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank Appreciate you. Um, I'll provide Karen's uh, update. She is in Texas. She thinks she's flying home tomorrow. I haven't broke the news to her that uh, that's probably not going to happen. <laughs> the weather gets us like it's supposed to uh, so budget uh, she has been working remotely so thank goodness uh, budget I will be meeting with Jennifer Neal to recalculate the wages and benefits for 2024 and meeting regularly with budget to review each division uh, C civil division CPLs paper service and records requests are very active right now KCSO conducted a sheriff's sale for grain on December 8th um, 2023 at 10 a.m. I think that was Karen's first public sale. She was extremely nervous, but she rocked it. So, <laughs> uh, training, she attended the anti harassment training on December 4th, and that was provided by the Human Resources Department. Sex offenders, we're actively tracking the sex offenders in the county and verifying their location. I have to say, McKenna's done an outstanding job uh, getting everything current and up to speed on the sex offenders. Uh, Bob spoke uh, in great detail about the um, new juvenile uh, requirements. I think I need to make it clear also to people that it's not just juveniles who are being relieved of duty, it's adults who were convicted as juveniles. So we have a level three adult who is convicted as a juvenile. If According to this new law, he would be released from duty to register. So it's not just juveniles being released. Mm -hmm. It's adults who are convicted as juveniles. Right. In my understanding, there's uh, 2,300 statewide that are being released through this new law. Thurston County, within one week of releasing one of their sex offenders, the sex offender went out and he committed a sex crime. Shocking. Yeah. Right. So... This list, we all need to be hammering these people. It's There's a couple names on there, ludicrous. and one of them that surprises me. Yeah, me he, too. He's big law enforcement. He's got current law enforcement bills to right. to give you guys back the authority that was stripped, but then voted for that, and it makes me think that maybe he just accidentally said I at the wrong time. Yeah, um, I don't know. It doesn't it, make it's sense. Just you know, it makes absolutely no sense, and it makes me. And if, uh, very frustrated. I mean, if these people would like to live with these sex offenders, please go because I prefer to keep my community safe. I don't want people exposed to these criminals. They're not being held accountable. 
So yeah, don't get me started. Yeah, me either. <laughs> uh, Range Timber, uh, the program is in the off season. I know he's been out a few times. Um, I need to give him a call, to see where he's at, how he's doing. He's probably snowed in currently. Uh, Body worn cameras, the cameras are in use and functioning as planned. Um, K9 program, he's back to active duty and happy to be working again. I know he's had two tracks the last couple of weeks. He got to go up at Appleton and chase around a guy who unfortunately got away and I did a track down here. The guy ended up uh, dodging all of the law enforcement that was on scene and ended up on Broadway, but he uh, he is now, I think, still at our b and so uh, he did come to jail. The Marine program has two major deliverables. Our boat hours, we required 133 for 2023, and we achieved 134.41 hours. Our boat inspections for 2023, we were required for 92, and we managed to get 90 of those in. Um, posse program, thanks to all the posse members for all their time and effort. Um, they continue to help us in um, all sorts of ways. Um, I do want to point out that part of our what I'm doing this year, too, is forecasting we're going to pre-plan and have dedicated days for our Marine, Marine Patrol uh, so we get people signed up early. We're not last minute. We're going to do a boat inspection today. We're going to have those pre-planned out. We're hoping to utilize uh, places like Asotin County. Uh, they put out a big sign along the highway, boat inspections here, and people go off the, and they pull in and it's mandatory boat inspection. So um, I think they're going to work with WSP because we have the area there at the scale house when they're not doing the scale house stuff that we could utilize that section. That's what they do up in Asotin County and toward that direction. So how do you, if I, if I can ask, how do you do a mandatory boat inspection to make sure that they're abiding by the law when they're traveling down the road? I don't know. They do it all. Voluntary, over. I can understand, but right. mandatory. Well, it just says boat inspection. I don't know if it says mandatory, but people are always filling up at those sites that we see. So um, if it helps us. I, I think voluntary program would work because yeah, I, law enforcement on the water tends to interrupt your fishing time during a right. really hot bite. Right. That if they can pull over on the side of the road and give 10 minutes of their time to not be bothered when they're out fishing, they'll be happy to do so. And you're less likely to ha get a citation if you're on land. Yeah. But if you're in the water, you're getting a ticket. Yeah. If you're, uh, yep. If, if my, I had a kid play with my fire extinguisher and, in <laughs> yes, uh, in a parking lot, it's not a ticket because it's not a law that you right. have to have a valid fire extinguisher in a parking lot. Right. If I was caught on the water, it would have been a ticket. So, right. So, uh, and I think just getting a lot of voter education and stuff out there. Um, good call. So, uh, yeah, I think it'll, oh, I think oh, it'll help. I would definitely agree with you. If we're going to have a sign up there says voluntary boat yeah inspection. you'll get compliance yeah i i don't think there's says mandatory i just think it says boat inspections but you see a long line of boats all the time so people don't mind that i guess but if it helps get our numbers so i don't know i think we're gonna have a busy year good year i'm gonna learn to build spreadsheets better and make charts <laughs> Posse scouts. Yeah, yeah. So, well, sounds good. Any questions? No, thank you for oh. coming over. I do not thank you all for what you do. Well, and you're appreciated by some. I, I will maybe call, not by all, but by definitely by some. I will call you later in the in the day, Carmen. If you're still around, I might come visit. Yeah, yeah. I'll be there. Um, I want to thank the board as well. Thank you. It's a partnership. It goes both ways. It is. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good you day. You didn't me mention the, the SAR, did you? Oh, yes, yes, yes. My bad. No, the SAR, they had their uh, uh, ceremony, uh, dinner for SAR volunteers. Uh, Commissioner Anderson attended as well. Uh, I, dang, I, that's my bad because I planned on having that. <laughs> sheet there but they put in numerous hours volunteer hours and you know i have to say i'm so proud of this our organization because one of the 
I think they're one of the best in the state. Mm -hmm. And they constantly get requests from other counties to assist, and we're always happy to assist. Uh, now there was a lot of awards given out for a number of years on the job. The new uh, new recruits uh, got awards for joining. Uh, I think the membership up is around, maybe you'll recall, but around 65 or something, 70, yeah. something like that. Mm -hmm. And they do a lot of training. They do a lot of hard work and uh, couldn't be more proud of them. And Jeff King, uh, of course, as you know, he wears several hats and he is our representative. He's a SAR coordinator for the sheriff's office and he does an outstanding job, outstanding job. Plus he's, as you all know, he's a EMT, I mean, the emergency management dispatch. And so that, that man does a lot of work. Yes. Yeah, yeah they, she's a reserve deputy sheriff. They said they had 1,194 mission hours and 5,963 volunteer hours last year. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. That's, yeah. That speaks a lot. That's a big deal. You know, and being the business we're in, I appreciate them. Yeah. I see what they do, and um, I've seen it, seen them go to work yeah. many, many times. And yeah. I'm sorry I missed that, and I was thankful that Mr. Anderson represented uh, Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, thank you, Commissioner Anderson, for bringing it up. My bad. <laughs> a lot going on. I need one question. Um, with the wolves still being federally protected here, and, and so you want someone to call you. If they shoot one. If they end up shooting shooting a wolf. Yep. Um, I just want to make sure we're clear for the record that that you may not, you know, write them a ticket or anything, but the federal government still could. Yes, they still could. And I put that clear to, I talked to the Cattlemen's Association the other night. Okay. And I said, I will not arrest or write a citation. But if you end up shooting a wolf, because that wolf is protected federally in our county. I said, that does not stop the feds from moving forward. Right. Okay. But I said, I want to be called so we can write up the report, justify the report, then we can deal with the feds if they uh, go to pursue it. Okay. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Hmm. Sciatic. <laughs> Got to hit you in your get along. Yeah. yeah. Got to go slow. Yeah, he's been busy. Get the bone cracker. Uh oh. <laughs> I like the elevator. Yeah. The elevator. Yes. Yes. Yeah. At least it's working today. They say when you <laughs> yes, don't get it stuck in it. Yeah. That would be a panic. <laughs> Great. So 11.02. Then we have our department update from our treasurer, Greg Gallagher. Good morning. Good morning. Oops. Um, so this morning, um, we are working on the foreclosure, um, sale. And so, um, as customary, um, we're trying to take the tax title properties and I say customary, we've only done it twice now, but we're trying to keep the, any property that gets tax title or becomes tax title through the auction that we put them back up for auction again in the following sale, um, and so we have two properties that are tax title currently. Um, the RCWs require that the um, legislative body set the minimum bid. Um, so I put together a resolution for you guys to take care of that. I will kind of give you a little background to my thoughts. Um, so both of these properties had a nuisance abatement on them. Um, and sometimes the nuisance abatements can make them higher than what the public is wanting to spend um, for the minimum bid at the initial property, uh, initial uh, auction. So we will uh, end up with them in through tax title. Um, the, per the RCWs, the nuisance abatement goes away during the tax foreclosure process. So um, <clears throat> what we did on these was we took and made the minimum bid the taxes only um, for the property, um, which has nothing to do with the nuisance abatement. The prices are probably a little lower, but we've had good luck getting that to get the bidding going. I think sometimes if you get them too high, 
um, people are reluctant to want to start that. So sometimes if you start it a little lower, somebody will bid and then another person will bid and you can actually get a little higher. We had this happen um, on the online process. We sold a surplus house for Bob that was um, conf or, uh, not confiscated. That's not the right word, but it came through the drug process and we had the price way too high and we never got a bid on it. And so when we brought the price down a little bit, it got people bidding and actually brought a higher price than what we had at the previous time, but we kind of had to learn that. So the minimum bid is lower than the assessed value, but our goal is to get the properties back onto the tax roll and get them generating proper or uh, taxes. The other thing to know about tax title is that when we do sell these, the total amount of the property will go to all the districts that have a lien on the property. So we take for example, the Darland house, which is over here, um, if it goes for 30,000, I'm just using that, then the 30,000 will be broken up by the 2024 levy rate amounts. So the city of Goldendale had a lien on that um, for, hold on, I did bring that. About 46,000 on top of the taxes. Um, and so they tore a house down and some other things. So that wasn't us. That the was, city of they, Goldendale, they, I said. I'm sorry about that. Yeah, the city. We, the um, the Wishram one, we did have a lien on that one in Wishram. Um, and I believe, I can't remember if I didn't write it in here. I don't remember what the, how much the lien was. I want to say it was 12000 but I can't remember for sure. Um, maybe that was the total minimum bid. But anyway, so the taxes will go and get allocated based upon that. So, for example, if it went for thirty thousand, um, they would get the city of Goldendale would get eighty seven hundred dollars because it takes the total. They're they're they get twenty nine point three percent of the levy in the city. Right. So first gets paid everybody's taxes. No, that's then... not the way tax title works. Okay. That's what I was trying to do. Tax title is different than um, tax foreclosure. So tax foreclosure, we pay the taxes and then any excess proceeds go into a fund that potentially would go back to the the rightful owner of the property. Um, or the, the lien first, right? So if this, the city still had the lien on it, then it would do the the lien would get covered. Yes, I was sorry, that the lien would be same position as taxes. So it would pay, that's part of the minimum bid. Oh, it's the same position. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's, be, it, yeah, it becomes part of the minimum bid. Okay. But this way, it's In not tax title, it, you, we set a minimum bid, which is what I'm asking you guys to do. And then the bidding will go from there. And then the total amount will get distributed per the current year levy uh, rates. So any money that they spend on the 40000 that's washed. They Which would be the same thing for the county on the one that we have, um, if, if whatever we, but we, we're not getting anything for it either at this point in time because there's no taxes right. accruing or anything. It just goes on the tax rolls as zero. What if it, I guess I'm confused, what if it sells for more than the taxes owed? The taxes owed are relinquished when the property becomes tax title. Or they're, they're, they they go away. All the liens go away. So when it becomes tax title, it's just based on levy percentages and where the money goes? Current current year levy, right. So we don't go backwards to like if you took the – because some counties have tax title property that could date back. I, I know at one point in time in a treasurer association, we had some folks that said they had some that went way back that they could never get rid of or whatever. You don't go back to the time it became tax title. You do it as the current year taxes. That way there, you know that the districts that are in the TCA. So yeah, it is different. Tax title is different. How does it go from one to the other? To How does it become tax title? Versus Nobody bids on it at the tax foreclosure auction, okay. which is what happens. And that's the thing with, with that you kind of have to be careful of with nuisance abatements is when you get them so high that then that raises the minimum bid of the property and people aren't willing there's a there's a level in there because and i don't know this specifically i'm i'm i can't buy tax title property so i but i i know there's a part of it where some title companies won't 
tie insure a title on that for i i think it's like up to two years mm -hmm. so i mean that buyer has to have cash and they have to be prepared to hold on to that for a period of time before they're going to reap some of their pieces to it so there's a balance as to where they're going to um where it's going to land so when we do the first one the tax ta the tax foreclosure foreclosure do we have to set the minimum bid at what's it's the, you, you get, the board has nothing to do with that because it's set at the taxes owed that but it's uh, set at the taxes owed plus Plus the nuisance abatement. The nuisance abatement comes into the same position because we attach it to the taxes per asked by the city. So it becomes just like taxes. Okay. Oof. Thirty six, thirty five, one hundred, one twenty, one ten, and one twenty. If you ever want to look at them, say that one more time. Thirty six, thirty two, one twenty. Thirty six, thirty five, one hundred, one ten, and one twenty. Thirty six, thirty two, one twenty just talks about the ability to attach the taxes to the property or the nuisance abatement to the property in the position of taxes. 36, 35, 100 is the treatment of county held tax title property. Okay. Thank you. Yep. So I'm just here to explain the resolution. And if you guys have questions or, you know, hopefully we it will be able to be um, signed today because we'll need to, um, uh, advertise for that in order. The sale is slated, I believe, to open on February 14th. We have a printed resolution before us. I thought it was in the packet. It is in the packet. Yeah. So if you guys have any questions, I'd be happy to fulfill them. And again, I'm making sure that the, that the minimum bid is started at. So we're asking for the parcel in Goldendale over here, which is 425 West Darlin, to be set at 4,314.82. That's the amount of the taxes that are owing. There's nothing set in that number. We could do the assessed value. We could, there's a million different things, but the property will go for what somebody's willing to pay for it. And so the kind of the thought was, I mean, if somebody goes, oh, well, I can bid $4,300 and end up with a piece of property, that's great. But somebody else is going to, there's lots of people out there. And these things typically in this auction, um, they will uh, all wrap up right at the very end because it's open for a day and it seems like it comes right down to the last. Yep. Is it sealed bidding or open bidding? No, it's, it's uh bid for assets. So it's, I mean, I don't, it, it's it's all online. So you go on, you sign up through the bid for assets site and put in your um, reserve amount. And then there, and I believe that their system resets at the um, end of each yeah. one. So it could go on for a lot longer than it does. If there's a bid in the last two minutes, it extends yep. the bid period. Yep. For, yep. Yeah. And that traditionally has happened. And this is the same way we had um, there was a handful of tax title properties that we had, and I can't remember with COVID. It was pre-COVID, but we got rid of a handful of them. There was one in White Salmon that was on a corner um, that down there, and it, we we were very successful in you know getting the dollars back to the county and also getting them back on the tax roll. And that's what we're hoping to do is just get them back on the tax roll so that they're part of the whole process so that they're not just excluded and that somebody can either build on them or hold on them or be responsible for them or however. So it's just not sitting on the sidelines. Are you fair? Okay. Yes. Uh, Madam Chair, we have before us um, a resolution amending the matter of the sale of certain tax title properties by public auction, um, noting that there are two tax parcels um, to be sold. Um, on the 14th of February, 2024 at 10 a.m. using the online bid for assets. My motion is to approve the resolution. I'll second. Motion and second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Hearing none, motion passes.
Awesome. Thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Stay warm. <laughs> you too. Good luck. Yep. Okay. So we are now at 1114 and um, have accomplished everything except for unfinished business with the county board positions. Um, it looks as though I have some homework and research to do. Uh, would either of you mind recessing, recessing early for lunch? Uh, no. Coming back at one. I, again, my stance is on, if it's on a uh, county at large position, I have no problem. So I think there are some appointable positions in there that we could easily do. Um, if it's this board's opinion to appoint uh, for district three positions that are not uh, people that I recommended, then I would have a problem with. And that's whether you do it now or whether you do it at one o'clock. Um, I have something this afternoon. So if we could wrap this up before lunch, uh, it would be nice. Um, so which positions at large are you talking about, Dan? Columbia Gorge Regional Airport is one that's at large. Okay. Uh, the left disability board is at large. Everything that doesn't say district two and district three behind it is at large. Um, and there's only, you know, senior advisory board for district two. Um, if the district two commissioner wanted to make a recommendation to a point for that seat, I have no problem with that. Um, If the district two commissioner wanted to make a recommendation to appoint to the civil service board for the district two seat, I have no problem with that. Applications for the civil service commission. Do we have more than one application there? Just, just the one. Okay. Mr. Anderson, would you like to go forward with all of those except bringing back um, senior service advisory board and planning commission votes after lunch. Um, or um, it's my belief as a board we can go forward. Um, I know there's a difference in interpretation of the um, Resolution 02521 with Mr. Christopher's interpretation of the one paragraph. I feel like it's um, holding up the board votes and that even with research and asking, uh, reach out for legal, which takes their time and energy, which they might not have for us today. Um, in order to keep these boards moving, I would be in favor of just moving forward with voting on all, all of those in order as they were presented to us so that we can do good business and just get done with the, with the boards today. I think we have everything before us that we need. We have willing people to participate in these boards, which uh, I'm thankful for. And you can't say that all the time that people are willing to volunteer in these positions. Um, so I'd like to honor our process. We set it back. Uh, we've been having this discussion for about three weeks now. We set it back last week to this week in order to let final uh, applications come in. I have not changed my position since then. Um, and I'm willing to go forward to vote for the people. Okay, uh, we have before us, I'm gonna go one by one. Okay, uh, thank you. As you, as the chair, uh, we have before us the Columbia Gorge Regional Airport Board. We had had one application, and that is from Tim Ernest. Um, my uh, motion is to approve. I'll second. Um, all those in favor? Aye. aye. All those aye. All those opposed? Hearing none. Um, the appointment uh, for Tim Ernest for Columbia. Gorge Regional Airport Board is approved. Uh, we have before us uh, one vacant position for the Civil Service Commission, um, letting uh, the record show that it has been advertised the entire time according to the policy. And we had one application from Ian Perry. Uh, my motion would be to approve. Um, and 
not hearing a second, I will step down and second that decision. Discussion. Any discussion? Um, I would just uh, note for the record through the discussion that we only had one applicant and that it was advertised for the full length of time. Okay. I'll get to that one next. <laughs> I missed it. Um, I would like discussion. Okay. Um, I will be voting no because I think this board is violating county policy. Um, and just like the sheriff said, elections matter. And it should be up to the person elected to represent their district. And it shouldn't be up to the other two commissioners to um, violate county policy and usurp their authority. But this board is this okay. board. I, I, excuse me, I, it's, I have the floor. Um, I think we've heard your position. Then feel free to gavel me down. I still have the floor. Okay, go ahead. Um, I would like to thank Commissioner Sauter uh, because although we did not agree on everything, he never used his position on this board to um, bully. And I find it very unfortunate that this board has turned into what this board is currently turned into. And I, I have hopes uh, for the people of this county and the people of District 3 that the next election uh, can clarify things for them. Uh, with that, I am uh, I am done now, Madam Chair. So, uh, since we're in discussion, may I, Madam Chair? Yes. Uh, we have someone from um, the public who's willing to serve, who's who's asked for this position. Um, we have all advertised in the paper. We have advertised on Facebook. We have asked for everyone, um, and we've all had the time to go out there and try to find someone as well. Um, this is an important position. Um, so are you saying you don't support, you know, Please don't put words in my mouth, sir. I'm, I'm asking that was a question. No, that was putting words in my mouth. That was a, well, you could ask him to clarify. I was, we have an application. Um, I don't know this person. I don't know if anybody knows this person I do. Mm -hmm. and you know, this person. Yes, I do. Um, and there's a lot more to the criteria for appointment with regards to just the geographical representation. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and and I guess if Commissioner Christopher wants um, does not want to accept the application, um, I can understand that. Um, there's been applications for positions that I would not appoint that person, even if they were the only person. And so I can respect that. Um, it is, uh, Mr. Hansen is district two, and I believe he's well qualified for that position and is willing to serve uh, under all the qualifications, not just being in district two. So, yeah. If I may respond to Commissioner Anderson, um, I do not know this person. I, in as two commissioners don't know this person, if the board wants to appoint a District 3 representative that only the board chair knows, um, feel free. Um, you you have the power with two votes uh, to do so. Again, I believe you're violating county policy and setting a bad example for the employees in this county. But you have the power to do so. So what do we do with this motion, Dick? Um, we have to take a vote. Okay. Um, or um, one other, according to the county policy, because uh, we announced the vacancy, 
Uh, we can do an appointment by interview. Um, we are currently doing an appointment by application review. Um, and we can also do a review by recommendation of others. Um, being that um, we only have one applicant and two of the board members do not um, know this person, um, I would be happy with um, uh, interviewing the person. So I don't have the list of applicants in front of me today. Um, they're on the drive. Okay, I'll go to the drive and look for them. I don't have the hard copy. Um, so there's only one applicant for the civil service position. No, okay. or district three. There is. Okay, for district three. The motion before us is district three. Yeah, but there's only one applicant. Correct. She's confused. She was talking I see. about Hanson. Okay. There's a second position, which is district two. Okay, now I'm caught up to speed. I'm good. Okay, so um, what you need, uh, so we're, is everybody had discussion, correct? And what we need now is the motion because we're voting on district three, correct? And we have- I guess the next question would be, is, is Commissioner Christopher, would you like to um, do an interview of Ian Perry, since you do not know this person, but they've applied? I guess I would think that it would behoove this board to make sure they have knowledge uh, that would be beneficial to the position this board was thinking about uh, applying them to. Um, that that would be a smart thing, but and work. So I I guess it definitely helps the way in which I vote. The question is is whether or not we would have you are in favor of doing an interview of Mr. Perry since only one person knows the, the individual, or would you like to re-advertise and go back out and ask for more applications for the civil service position? It's kind of a trap question, and it was—it was, wasn't meant to be. I'm not implying anything. Um, I would say that I have not looked for any of the board appointments for my district because I don't know whether I would be wasting my time, wasting their time, getting their hopes up if the board was only going to supersede and do what they wanted to do anyway. So I have not even looked. I have not reached out to people that I believe are qualified for any of these positions until I uh, found out whether the board was going to uh, follow the county policy or not. So to me, I am not going to appoint someone I don't know to any board. Um, so if, if, if the two that are potentially voting yes to this um, feel they might need to interview the person, um, that, that's up to them. I do not feel I need to reach out. Our policy has always been to go by the applications. We've done that for years. People fill out their applications. I think you can reach out from that application if you have questions prior to getting all the way down to the vote. And now to back this up and ask people to come in for interviews, um, I think we're disregarding how we've always managed the process in the past. I would and advise there is, the chair that she has a policy right in front of her and what Commissioner Anderson is saying about interview yeah. process is clearly written in that policy. And it is, but we've never entertained that before. And it is there. And I could see where we could reach out early in the process, potentially, rather than when we get to a vote. Um, so for me right now, um, with the applications we have before us and the information on all the applications, I don't feel that I need an interview at this time for any of the applications. Sure are good at making something simple pretty difficult. So sorry. <laughs> so uh, where we stand in the process now is we have. Well, I guess I guess okay. Commissioner Christopher made a couple comments that probably need to be responded to. Um, we have the process, and the fact that you chose to not go out and look for anyone. Um, knowing that today was going to be the day that we'd be the, having this discussion, um, I guess that's because I've, I've I've looked for my you know 
other person and thought I was going to have people applying and I posted it on Facebook and I've done everything I can to get people to try to apply. I can definitely, based on these conversations, see why people don't apply. Mm -hmm. um, and we have, we have an application from District 3 in which your seatmate, uh, the chair, has vouched that the person would be a good person on that. Um, I have no problem trusting uh, what Commissioner Zoller is saying that they would be a good person for this. Um, saying that, and I have no problem interviewing them, like we interview for everything else. Um, and that's, a, that's an option. Um, but if Commissioner Zoller and granted our commissioner districts um, are real close to each other, especially two and three up here in this valley, um, I'm a little by myself over there. Um, I would also mention that um, when we are elected, uh, the three of us, we are elected by all of the county for the general election. We are not elected just by the people from our district. We represent the entire county. Um, and that needs to also be um, pointed out um, that while the method of appointment, um, item, item number five, um, says that, that the district shall submit their top two ranked candidates to the whole board. Well, if you only have one person, um, okay. unless we're willing to let it sit open for till you find someone, that's kind of the options. Um, it's It was a way of, of narrowing down the numbers in which I've now found that can also be used to uh, game the system. So uh, with that, whenever you're ready for a vote. Um, yes, and how far did we get with that vote? Do we back up now? Do we entertain? It's a vote to appoint Ian Perry for- District, District three. 3. Yes, I would entertain a vote for Ian Perry, District 3, Civil Service Commission. Say aye. Aye. Uh, those opposed? Nay. Um, with two votes, the motion passes. Ooh. Madam Chair, we have the Civil Service Commission District 2. Uh, Russ Hansen has reapplied. Um, I would make a motion to approve. I'll second. All those in favor? Uh, discussion. Oh, discussion. I'm sorry. Um, I, I don't have any discussion on this. I think Russ Hansen is well qualified. He has a background in civil service. Um, and I have no issues. Uh, I would also just then mention um, to the person who made the second that um, this is a position that is by district that um, we are then not following the county policy of bringing two names forward. Mm -hmm. According to their interpretation. So all those in favor? Aye. Didn't know discussion was ending, but okay, discussion ended, so I don't get to discuss, so the vote can go on. Okay, opposed? Nay. Did you vote, Chair? No, no. I did not. So did Mr. Christopher second that? I did. did. Okay. He seconded it, but we went to a vote. Okay. Well, we ended discussion early, so, and uh, so it's kind of a little more chaos than... Yeah, I got mixed up in the chaos process. Because it could have been a yes vote, but I've been able to have some discussion. So... It's unfortunate. I... Do I have to step down? So you still vote. You don't have to step down. Okay. You only step down if you need to second it. Right okay. now, you need to vote oh, either. I... In, I okay. Got I it. for... Uh, in favor. Correct. In favor of Russ Hansen for Civil Service Commission District 2. Okay. Next up, we can have... I, can I have discussion now? Since we're not on to the next topic yet. Um, rather than enter into the back and forth, I'd like to keep it to regular Robert's Rules of Order profits <laughs> if we can, because I'll, we're, I'll, we're I'll out of control. Because yeah, we are out of control. Yes, it is. And the discussion turns into fritter-fratter and it goes downhill. So I'd like to keep it simple. Um, discussion at a minimal, back and forth once, and move on. 
Madam Chair, we have um, the Clickitat Citizens Review Committee. Uh, we have one application from Mark Harvey. Um, my motion is to approve. Do we have a second? I will second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, I'm sorry, I did not offer discussion. No, you didn't. Would you like to have discussion on that position? I would Please, just... I already voted. You can't have more discussion. Okay. Well, you just set a precedent on the last vote. No discussion after the vote. Works for me. Uh, okay. uh, Madam Chair, for the Veterans Advisory Board, uh, we have um, Aaron Quinn um, and Cindy Furlong have uh, both reapplied, um, and Frank Huey's expiration uh, for District 2 did not reapply. So my motion is to appoint um, Aaron Quinn and Cindy Furlong. Do we have a second? Um, I will step down and second. All those in favor? It didn't say, but they're by district. Are they by district? It just says district two vacant, and I don't know if that's. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Oh, it is by district. Okay, well, I made my motion. Yes. Did you step down? The yes, table? I did. And I asked for all those in favor. Uh, just, did we have any discussion? No discussion again. I'm sorry. Um, I'll call for discussion. Do, do we have discussion now? That's it. Okay. I would like discussion. Uh, I have no problem with either one of these appointments. Um, but following the protocol, I, I believe that I should have been able to bring forth the District 3 nomination. Um, and if this board would like for me to do that, I would be happy to do that. Um, but I have to follow the policy. Okay. Mr. Anderson. Huh? I, I don't need any discussion. We only had one application and it was a seating person. Okay. And all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Nay. Um, motion carries for the disability board. Do we have anything else we can move forward with, Jake? Uh, we've got the planning commission. So we'll Go ahead. Get it done. Uh, Madam Chair, we're, uh, we have uh, Rick Graves and Dave Barda from District 1 and District 2 who have reapplied, who have been serving on the Planning Commission, um, and there are no other um, people for their positions. Uh, that being the case, my motion is to approve uh, Rick Graves and Dave Barda. Second? I will second for the sake of discussion. Discussion? Um, I'm assuming District 1 and District 2 have no problems with these recommendations, and these are who the D2 commissioners are bringing forward to re-serve re another term. Is that correct? Just correct. for my clarification? Mm -hmm. Okay, no problem. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? The motion carries for Graves position 1, Barta position 2. Would you I, I didn't good note. I, did not, not. Yeah. I was for what? To, to make, say I. Making sure the chair yes. voted. So it's unanimous on all on those two positions. Okay. Uh, I would like to, as the commissioner for district three, bring forth my recommendation and motion again. Uh, to appoint uh, Mr. Matt Childs to represent District 3 on the Planning Commission. And we have other applications? We have two other applications. You have a motion before you and you don't have discussion yet. Okay. Um, I will second the motion. Discussion. Do you have a discussion? I was waiting, letting let the... Person who made the, the discussion. I, yeah, I, do. I just 
I'm following the county policy and bringing forth the names and making the recommendation to the board um, to appoint Mr. Matt Childs. I think he's done an exemplary job uh, filling in for me on the Board of Adjustments why he's waited for his turn on the Planning Commission. Um, I think he's done a good job on the Title 12 Road Board for this board. I think he's sat in on the FSEC to prove his worth to this board, and I would hope that this board um, thanked him by appointing him to the job he wants, and that's Planning Commission. And that's the end of my discussion. And can I clarify something with you? Sure. Um, in our discussion a few minutes ago, you had said that um, you had not stepped out, not reached out to anybody, but in discussions in the past two weeks, you made it very plain that you had reached out to Mr. Child and discussed the position with him. I did not reach out to any other that has not applied to see if they wanted to apply. Mr. Child's was already application on file. So we have a motion and a second discussion. All those in favor? Aye. Do you want to continue discussion? Or Did you have more discussion? Sorry, Jake, I might've cut you off. I uh, thought we only had one chance to discuss. That was the board I think he the chair's to rule a minute you. ago that we each get one comment and then we move on. I think he deferred to you to let you speak first. He did not, he, I asked if he'd like to speak and he deferred to you, then I spoke. So. <sighs> Dick, I'm sorry. No, to, okay. I would just say that um, I definitely respect where Commissioner Christopher is coming, that he said he'd promise this to Mr. Childs. Um, I would also mention that um, we have uh, someone who has applied for this position um, who has been serving on uh, the Planning Commission um, for going on 20 years and is one of the few that has historical knowledge um, and understands it. Um, when I actually look at the, the county policy for reappointments, um, Mr. Christopher, Commissioner Christopher is correct. There is no vested right to reappointment and I don't believe there should be. Um, but you also need to evaluate the incumbents um, for the following, thus being the attendance, the understanding of the function of the board, the contribution to the success of the board, commissioner committee, the effectiveness as participating as a member of the board and the number of terms served. I would just more like to mention that I believe that Mr. Spaulding has done an exemplary job on uh, the board uh, uh, for the planning commission, um, that he's been the chairman um, and that he takes his takes the job very seriously. And I know ha that having served on that board with him. So I would like to thank him for all of his time. Um, I would also mention that um, when we went through this back in 2021, um, I said there's always um, room um, for gamemanship and playing um, because when you have an option of two, you can bring forward the person you want and then you can bring forward a no-name person um, for that being a potential. Uh, this is why I have a problem with ranked voting in the first place because it's all just a game. Um, the fact that we have someone that... Um, has spent 20 years uh, volunteering for this county um, that doesn't even get to be discussed in the mentioning of it. Um, then when we have another person that is number two um, is someone that the commissioner brought forward who's admitted they don't even know the person. Um, to me, that smells of gamemanship. Um, uh, with that, um, I understand how this works and I will follow the county policy. Um, but I would like to make it known um, publicly that I look forward to changing the county policy so that gamemanship cannot occur like this in the future. And my one last comment is, is also in the policy, um, no one is, should, it's not a shall, which we discussed before, serve on two boards. And I would also like to mention that both Ian Perry and Matt Childs are serving on another board currently which I understand that Matt has said to um, you that he would step down from, but he has not resigned from that board. Yeah, and I... my last statement 
Uh, this is, has nothing uh, about Mr. Childs. I think Mr. Childs served this county wonderfully um, with regards to the Board of Adjustment, um, Title 12 road standards, and um, at the state FSEC. Uh, this, is, this is more about process. Short one. Charlie. Uh, I would just like to mention Matt Spaulding was not part of this discussion, but he brought it Mr. Spaulding. Um, and then thank you for allowing me the opportunity to thank Mr. Spaulding for the work he has put in on the board. My recommendation for appointment has nothing to do with Mr. Spaulding. Uh, it, it is not meant to uh, attack or demean or belittle Mr. Spaulding. I think he's done a fine job. I just believe in term limits. Um, I believe the majority of voters believe in term limits. Uh, and I believe the majority of the voters believe in fresh ideas. Uh, and that is why I made the recommendation I did. I just wanted to make sure that was clear to the general public. Thank you. And do I get discussion? You get discussion. I get discussion. So I'm going to stand on the ground that I stood on a couple of weeks ago when we had this discussion. And um, both... Mr. Christopher and Mr. Anderson made points about the how valuable each one of these people are to boards that we have and, and the time and the commitment they put in. For the year of 2024, I have a commitment of standing ground and moving forward. Least amount of changes possible causes least amount of money to be spent, least amount of learning curves to happen. And we have some... Um, crucial things that each one of these gentlemen are working on, the critical area ordinance, uh, the solar things they're overseeing on the planning commission at this time, as well as Mr. Um, Child spending his time, energy, and his learning curve with AFSEC, which is a very valuable position where he's at now. So uh, I just wanted to thank them for doing that. And that's all I have to say. We can move forward. So, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Remind me what it was. That was to appoint that Matt Childs. Appoint Matt Childs. Okay. And I'm going to be a no on the record. Uh, those opposed? That was me, I guess. So, motion carries. Uh, Matt Childs uh, for Planning Commission District 3. Um, are you going to start searching for someone for the Board of Adjustment? I, uh, yes, I have someone that is more than happy to sit on it, at least temporary, if you're in a rip and roar and hurry. Um, I can have an application by next week. If you'd like me to do a little more detail, I might need more than a week. Well, I think it needs to be at least follow um, our, you know, thing that it needs to be what eighteen? How many days? Twenty one days. So take your time. You got twenty one days. Got it. Um, just a point of information. I shared it with the board before about Mr. Child's appointee to the um, planning commission. He can serve on both boards, but FSEC did, uh, with FSEC and the county, but FSEC did caution, he has to be very, very careful never to have conversations about pending applications with FSEC uh, to bring any of that information or have that discussion at the Planning Commission. The, yes, I, I don't worry because the Planning Commission is not going to be hearing anything to do with carriage or solar project uh, going forward. Uh, so I, I have no worries there. If the board still wanted to keep him on the FSEC board, that's... Yeah, and I've talked to him, and he would like to serve on both. Oh, I've talked to him, too, and I think uh, mm -hmm. it's okay. interesting. Okay. Um, we have no executive session. Um, with that, um, I would make a motion to adjourn... Wait. But I thought we did left board. Yeah, this is
No, there was there was no motion on left. There was motion on civil service. Oh, civil but then service. She said left, and oh, made kind of made some confusion. Okay. Um, we talked about Aaron and. No, no, that's a different one too. Okay. So we have uh, the Left Disability Board, citizen at large. We have one application from Frank Randall. My motion is to approve. I'll Thank second. you, ladies. Um, motion. Uh, all, uh, all those opposed. Uh, sorry, <laughs> I am so lost discussion. after all this debacle. Um, uh, is there any discussion? Um, yes, thank you. Um, I think it's great that Frank reached out and somebody reached out to him. Um, I think he'll be a good fit there. I look forward to meeting him and, and working with him when we reschedule our canceled meeting. All those things. Jake, do you have a discussion? Nope. I like Frank a lot. Yep. Great guy. Thank you, Frank. Um, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those aye. All those opp opposed? <laughs> Hearing none, motion carries. Okay. Now are you ready? What about um, Horticulture and pest. We didn't have any right. applications. Well, none. Okay. So anything else I see on here, there's none. Okay. And I would also add, if I may, that open space is one of those that likes to be a well rounded board, that there's somebody with irrigation, there's somebody without irrigation, and it might pay for the board chair to reach out to Billy to see if she can, uh, since she is the overseer of that board. Okay. Um, to make sure that she can reach out to people that she might not have personality contacts with that might fit into the open spaces um, to sit on the open space board. Okay, we'll have to see what we can do with the rest of those boards to get a motion. Go ahead, Jake. Okay, uh, Madam Chair, I would make a motion to adjourn the regular meeting, noting that uh, the county commissioners will uh, do a pre recorded uh, interview with KLCK January 17th at 9 30 a.m. Uh, to be aired on January 18th. We have no work scops scheduled for January 18th, and I hope everyone to be very safe um, for the next few days while we have snow and ice. Uh, I will second, and um, are we sure it's 9.30 and not any other time? Just because that just seems like a weird time. It is 9.30, yes, okay. it was to be 10 due to availability. Okay, okay. thank you for the clarification. My second still stands. Discussion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Hearing none, motion to adjourn passes. <laughs>